hey, 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 how's the mic? Um, it looks like it's a little bit low. But I have been having an issue. My laptop's been running super hot recently, so I don't want to pick up the fan. All right. I think that's good. I think that's good. Maybe if I turn the music down a little, or this, what is this? No, no, no. The game. Okay. Hey, 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 new. Look at this. Look at this tiny, tiny little face cam. All right. You like zoom in all the way on my face. All right. Don't forget it. Um, so man, man's field break is, is on the agenda today. Oh my gosh. I've lost the game. Cool. Um, <laughs> there's a video that's going to be coming out tomorrow, I think, um, that Nate edited, so I'm excited for you guys to see that. But basically, it's kind of funny that Mountain has come up because in the video I was trying to guess all the, the character types, and let me just tell you that <laughs> Mountain, Mountain was, was not it, was not it. Alright, so as, as with these Arknight streams now apparently, because when there's banners, when there's banners, that means pulling. I feel like we should come up with a jingle for this because it happens all the time. But anyway, I didn't get anything exciting on Mountain's banner. Very sad. Um, that's okay. His little, his little chibi kind of looks funny though. Okay, so out of this, I would like a weedy. I already have a shining, but if we, oh, actually, you know what? I could get. Out of the five stars, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you which five star I want. Kind of want Spectre, just so that I can pre prepare myself for Spalter, you know? Um, oh, also Spectre uses the, like, the whirly gig. <laughs> and if, if anything, I am a huge Bloodborne fan, right? You guys know it. All right, <laughs> Blood, Bloodborne fans, please don't come after me. It was a lie. I'm sorry. Just because my name in Genshin says let me solo her and my signature says no maidens. I swear I'm just Pepega. All right. Oh boy. Who are we supposed to be saving for? Is Elaine coming out? Oh, no, no, no. Gnosis. Gnosis is going to be the next one, right? Weedy's in the gold search shop. Interesting. Um, so wait, I set I set some of the characters every time they're like every time Oh my gosh, hush. Every time the new like the CN voices come out for the characters, I'm like, oh yeah, turn that on. And now they only say Ark Knights in Chinese, and I'm like, I miss I miss Blem. Arcanitsu. I didn't realize that I had her turned on CN. I should, I should, wait. I wonder if I have default. I wonder if I have CN default. Anyway. Um. M, M, B, E, X, 6 has been like. Oh, suffer. Not as not as much suffer as yes, we got Spectre! The Whirly Gig! We have secured the Whirly Gig! I pray. I pray to Spectre and hope to die. Um I I forget what I was saying now. But something. Oh yeah. Six? EX6 kind of been a pain. Not as bad as near light, but still a pain. All right, all right. I got the spot. Spot. Hmm. I should make chat a different shape. Anyway, how's everyone been? It's like it's been a while. It's been a while um, since I streamed. I actually think I haven't posted a video since I streamed last. So <laughs> that the one video that I kind of accidentally teased that was coming out took took a lot longer to edit than I had expected and so long to edit in fact that I I uh, outsourced it <laughs> so you guys you guys get to be blessed with Nate's editing if you guys know Nate um, you can you can shout out to them if they made any mistakes <laughs> we talked about this in the past but it's a joke be wholesome to Nate 
or I'll fight you. Yes, okay, so we have sub secured the specter. Let's go. That was not the right one. N nope, nope. Menuing in this game again. Menuing in this game strikes again. Ah, uh, where am I gonna put chat? Okay, chat's there. CC7. Ooh. Yatta! Yatta! What are these? These are showed up, showed up one day. Like, I already looked at this. Thank you, Blem. I'm aware. Uh, are, these are the ones that are, like, really difficult. <laughs> like, I only have so much brain power. So, Spectre is a guard. Wait. Attacks all blocked enemies. Wait, isn't that- isn't that Mudrock's skill, though? Heck yeah! Spectre with the whirly gig. Let's go! Wait, how do I- oh, shoot. Oh, here it is. Look at that! Look at that whirly gig! <laughs> super cute, super cute. Spalter do be looking spicy, though. Okay, cool. You guys are here for the, the Spectre initiation. So, I don't know how long this is. I don't know if it's going to be in one or two parts. There is like a couple other things that I was um, going to try to do tonight. Like, not on stream. Not in Ark Knights. <laughs> just in life. So I don't know if we're going to get to five of these and do half and then half of them next Friday. Or we're just going to go through all of them. Depending on the time, you know, at the end. Um... We'll, we'll see. Like, when we get to, when we get to MB4, and it's still early, we'll keep going, but if it's pretty late, then we'll just, we'll just <laughs> yeet. Yeet right out of there. Attacks enemies equal to block count. Oh, okay, so it's... That is so misleading. I was like, yo, this, uh, this person all the way on the other side of the field, we can attack them, this is fine. <laughs> any logic, any logic as to why that would work? Out the door, man, out the door. <laughs> um, yeah, so I played, I think I did Midnight's and it was really hard. I'm actually not even sure if I finished it, but they're, they're free, right, in terms of sanity. So if I, if I find myself needing something to do. All right, so who are these? Who are these people? Uh, this character is the six star, right? Okay, like the, the, some of the comments that I'm making are like, will make more sense after you see the video tomorrow. But basically, what I did was go through all of the six stars and try to guess what type they were. Um, spoiler alert: it went awful. I was very bad, <laughs> super embarrassing, but <laughs> so now I've at least seen all of the six star characters and I remember some character that looked like, like somewhat like this maybe. Um, so I'm assuming that is that character and this is the character that we got as welfare. All right, anyway, this should be the place, right? Mm, no, doubt about it. Oh. <laughs> Okay, remember how I said it was been a while since I streamed? Okay, it's also been a while since I read. Oh, back to square one. Mmm, no doubt, no doubt about it. Her name is Silence. Neat, just gotta check Silence. She really wanted to meet you here? This looks like a real ass bar. In pretty lively shape, too. A real ass bar. A real ass bar? But nobody's home. True. The liquor's all laid out very tidily, with an orderly ambience to match. Pretty bizarre. Should we head back, maybe? Not too long till we gotta get going. No, whoever invited us knows about Anthony's jailbreak. And then he's here with us, on top of, of. Let me know how the audio is too, if there's something wrong with it. Since we'll be heading off tonight, let me check over the mis miscellanies one more time. Miscellanies, miscellanies, that's what I wanna call it. I don't think that's how you say it though. Hmm, a message? I don't remember anyone in the city having my contact info. Wait, is this an internal band? <gasps> Miss Silence, who are you? 
No one important. What's important is that I know you have Anthony, and you're the one who broke him out. I don't know what you're talking about. No need to panic. Even if I can't prove it, you can rest assured that I'm no bad actor. Otherwise, I wouldn't go to the trouble of establishing contact with you on an inside wire. State your intentions. All I want is to invite you and Mayor, the engineer, out for a chat. Out for a date? I'll take that as a yes. Now the address is... Cool. Thanks for letting me know about the audio. So I think this girl is a bird. That's my- <laughs> that should be the next video, trying to guess- trying to guess what everyone is. Tragic. I don't know how many people have told me that Cora's a turtle, and I'm like, wait, turtle girl where? On top of the fact that she surrounded- sounded absolutely vile. Oh, <laughs> hearing that- who's- who's this gonna be? Hearing that as soon as I come in hurts me a little, you know? I don't know why I always default to like question mark and be like some super deep mysterious man. Who's it? Hiya! Hiya! Okay, Uncle Roger voice. I reserve the entire bar. It's just for the three of us all alone here. I really want to chit chat with you in a normal bar, but in the end, this isn't something we can just let anyone hear. So, so sorry's. Sorry's. You're. Alright, let's introduce ourselves. I'm the director of ecological. Ecological. Mule Sai. That's what we're calling her. I remember you. Wowie! You know me? I'm blessed. <laughs> I'm so blessed. Wow. Such an honor. My mentor once mentioned you. All right, your turn now. Do you need to ask? Aw, there's a ritual to these things. Zamiya. Structural, silence. Engineering, Lucha Workshop, Mayor. I hear you're with an organization called Rhode Islands now. How'd you get mixed up in this then? None of your business. Okay, yeah, she looks like an owl. This also looks like the logo to Arduino. <laughs> don't tell me you were behind all this. <laughs> I don't know, what do you think? No, likely not. Oh, you sure about that? If you could find us yourself, there's no reason you wouldn't know that Anthony has long since left Columbia. If you were the hand behind the curtain, a priori, there's absolutely no reason to seek us out. Hmm, <laughs> true, true. If I'm the Heidi Hand, I should be running around headless right now looking for Anthony, huh? But something tells me they won't lie down and take it, you know? Your bodyguards have an idea how tough- how tough they are? Don't worry yourself. You sure? Worry I won't then. Aye aye, Captain! Uh, silence. Time's running out. If she's not behind all this, then she's... <laughs> wasting our goddamn time. It's not clear to me yet either. But you're linked to this case, and you want something out of us here. This is why you're Director Pavari's star pupil over in Structural. You're a real smarty. I love chatting up with people like you. Don't change the subject. Oh, don't change the subject, Dr. Musai. Anthony left Columbia. His assassination has failed. Meyer and I- Mayor and I are ordinary people who just happen to have come to Columbia. What is this you want from us? All told? Aw, uh, relax a little. I'm ordinary too, just a researcher here, and I pose no imminent threat to you. The booze in this bar is four star, at least. Want to sit down and chat over some drinks? Hmm. Hey, you think we can silence? Ugh, fine. I got things I want to know too. Sweet, let me take a look then. I want this one. Ooh, you got a sharp eye. I like Riesling a lot. Not too high proof, but the aroma can strong arm you. Huh? I'm not actually that good with alcohol. You don't look it. Then let me recommend a fruit wine. Very low alcohol content. Very friendly flavor. Really? I'll give it a shot then. None of you look old enough to drink. Holy. Goody. What about you, Miss Silence? Plain hot water will be fine. Aw, come on. To a place like this and you don't even want to try anything more fun? I'm not interested. Fine, fine. 
All right, ladies, have a seat. Thank you. Whoa, this is really tasty. Glad you like it. Can we get to the topic at hand? We can. Down to business then. The way I see it, we both have questions, so we may as well trade answers. Of course, some questions will be off limits, but let's agree not to play any boring little word games, shall we? And, in the interest of demonstrating my goodwill, I'll give you one free question before we start. Ask away, and then you get 20. And if you can't guess it in 20, <laughs> I'm out. How did you find us? That's a pretty trivial first question. You sure? I thought you'd ask something more straight to the point. Please answer the question, Director Mulzai. All right. Whether or not you believe me, me and Hyde Bro's strike teams have nothing to do with each other. Hyde Bro? They're the company who moved against Anthony in this, right? Righty, you got history with them. Probably don't need much, too much introduction. Hyde Bro, former building materials juggernaut in Bunker Hill City, once clashed head to head with the up and coming Simon Co. Eep! Eep! They were up and coming back then? Yeah, Simon Co. originally was from the- oh, yeah, yes, Simon Co. was originally from the logistic business. By all accounts, the call was made to move into building supplies at board meeting. The company was named after the family, and ha half of its top floor employees related to CEO, Smith Simon, including the person at the heart of the affair, Anthony Simon, his one only son. The short story is, whether it was over or under the table, the two companies fought it out, and they fought hard, to the point of blood, some rumors say. And, in the end, no one- one can say Simon Co. lost, ever since Hydro has enjoyed a real monopoly over construction supplies commerce, not just in Bunker Hill, but surrounding cities as well. Mm-hmm. All correct. Gold star for you. Ultimately, you all come together in Ironforge City and shook them off. P.S. I've got to say you did a beautiful job, but we didn't shake you off. <laughs> Too true. I see you're not denying you were in league with them. Mm, I feel like you've got your guess, honestly speaking. But I can tell you, I borrowed their communications channel for sure. Not like there's room to breathe. If I didn't do this, I'd probably end up the biggest loser out in this whole thing. So, I think we can get into grilling each other now. One asks, the other answers. You start. <laughs> Concentration. 64. I'll go first. Category is... What the hell happened to Anthony? <sighs> No, let's have you start, Director Musai. GTA 5. Let's go. Woo. Woo -hoo. Can I? I want to know what your game is here. Alrighty, what I want to know is... Miss Silence, how did your helpful get in touch with Anthony? I laid him in a successful jailbreak while in prison. And aid him in a successful jailbreak while in prison. I want to grasp on how that went down. That's all in the past. Why do you want to know about it? Because I, uh, because I don't get how this jailbreak happened at all. The only paths I understand in the beginning. Hydro initiated the assassination plot they've been viewing forever. Anthony Simon, the last of the Simons who is locked up in Mansfield State Prison. And then the very end. Where Anthony led a group that successfully escaped Mansfield and then met up with you two and made it out of Columbia. This girl looks like she's trying to cosplay as Kelsit. As for everything in between, well, I had a chance to find out, but that slipped away by now. Very sad about that. <laughs> this memory these days, god, it's so hard being a boomer. So, I want to hear it from you. Just, what happened? This is not fair at all. Relax, I'm not here to try to get you- get the whole thing in one single question. You can toss out your own questions when you see fit, and I'll do my best just to answer. Of course, I might have other questions too, but probably not that many. Okay, being serious. We're only doing this I ask you, you, I ask you ask because we still don't know each other that well. Who can say if we once become friends, we'll let all the beans spill? <laughs> I do not intend to become your friend. And it's going to take an awful something. Uh, this is going to take an awful amount of time. Aren't you just ordinary people in Colombia right now? You're not in any sort of rush, are you? Of course, you're free to turn it tail and leave, but first thing, I have no way to guarantee you'll actually make it out. Second thing, I 
have no idea how much you really know, but this is probably for your one and only chance to pry intel out of me. Ecological Director Mulesai, you really want to let that go? You're threatening me. I'm giving you the opportunity that's least likely to get you hurt, Researcher Silence. Fine. I say you want to know, no matter what, and we're in no rush at all. Hey! <laughs> oh yeah, you're here too. Hey, I know this story. I can be drawing up some plans on the side here. Go for it. <laughs> Kafka! 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 Was that your assistant's name? Yes. Don't think I ever saw her name in any list of staff to do with you. She isn't a Rhine Lab employee. Rhine Lab would never hire her, and her interest in, in specific research is roughly zero. Huh. So, how do you know each other? Coincidental. But, that's another story. All you need to know is she's a friend of mine. She's the one who helped me gather all my intel on the Simon family. Ooh, she sounds like a real doer to me, and very loyal. Not many people would become a criminal and get thrown in prison for the sake of a friend, would they? I remunerated her appropriately. And she had her she had her own goal in being imprisoned. Her own goal? According to her, she always wanted to experience true prison life just once. Okay. <laughs> From her angle, my request must have seemed like I was paying her for it. What an oddball she is. Undoubtedly. I can't comprehend her sort of mentality to say the least. She sought out a carpenter named Mina to propose this staff when entering the prison. And she got sent in herself as a convict. Is Mina that one Liberi on your team? She is. From the sound of it, she was a total third party. Why'd you yank her into this? I'm not too sure either. All Kafka said was that Mina once had Anthony's aid and so would be willing to go inside to help him. The long and short of it is she accepted my request and entered Manfield State Prison. This music seems way too calm. But then again, we were at the bar. Oh my god! God. You ever just show up and smack somebody in the face? Royal Flush! Haha, <laughs> staying on top! Damn it. Lost again. Hey, Kafka, you're not cheating, are you? Ain't anyone else's fault you're bad, see? Both Kafka's hands empty. How's she gonna cheat? Yeah, exactly! <laughs> not my business how you hold your cards so crappy I can see them. But who'd have thunk it? First, I saw some saw you as some weedy little brat. My shame. You're better than I thought. And you got word from my mama. Your real friend, fair and square. <laughs> my mama. Peace, bro. Hey, 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 how many times am I gonna tell ya? I'm already grown up. Haha, <laughs> truth. Ought to be calling you a lady. Wooey, Kafka ma'am. Hey, you lot, break time's over. Back to work. Anyone slacking, you can kiss goodbye to your dinner. Yeah, 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 whatever. <laughs> You're just some jailer. Who made you king? What did you say? Speak up. I said I need a toilet. Hold it in. These jailers have a real bad attitude. Hey, Kafka, seeing you, seeing as you can get a thing or two, I'll give you some advice. Don't know where you muddle, muddled on the outside, but in Mansfield, I'd say you'd better keep your tail between your legs, figuratively speaking. Why's that? You know as well as me, this is a nomadic prison we're in. Times Times are it visit cities for supplies. Sure. T maybe takes on a few new inmates. Otherwise, it roams around the wilderness and nobody gives a hoot. So, in here, two and two can make fish. Only law is the jailer's law. Guess so. Hey, sort of a bright side though. Outside, it's just it's infected. What don't get treated a human. But once you're in here, you ain't treat a human whoever you are. Bastards in the A-Zone don't live any better than we do. I think of that and feel swell. A-Zone? <laughs> oh, right, you're fresh. People who ain't infected get cells in A-Zone. And us, get in <laughs> us infected get in B-Zone. That's how we know them. By anyway, A-Zone, B-Zone. Oh. <laughs> Can't help. 
But say, Kafka, you came in just at the right time. Uh-huh. Today's the big event. You're in luck, making it. And now everybody's from New York, because that's, that's, that's the prison life. What's the event? You'll know damn soon. Sure. Speaking of, what's the room over there for? Looks like a factory line to me. Why is it split off from our side? No one in there either. Where? Where do you mean? Ugh, oh, that's a C-Zone Special Assembly Line. C-Zone? They're the ones living in that tower dead center of the place. That's what we call C-Zone. <laughs> Scarce few there, but they made... But they've all made major messes. They'll pretty... They'll pretty much be serving all their lives. They gotta work too, but it ain't gonna be with us. So, that's where they do it. Oh, anyone in there called Anthony? Anthony? Anthony! <laughs> What's up? You know him? Eh, I wouldn't say we know each other. Just heard he was in here too. Well, else is he gonna be? Hey, zip it. You about ready? It's starting? Damn, took long enough. What's happening? What's happening? Me! God, why is this- why is this so much fun? So Sylvester Stallone! Oh my god! Oh my god, possibly. Oh, let's go. Y'all have some heavy balls and chains. Uh, why do all you look like you're getting together? Kafka, you're new here. Don't try anything today. Save you getting hurt. Just grab some kind of something and hide. Here's a front row ticket to Mansfield Big Regular Fixture Gang Fighting! Oh, let's go! <laughs> let's go! God, the story's so much fun. Why? Love prisoners. <laughs> oh, okay, I shouldn't say that, but man, this is fun. Da -da -da -da! Get your ass on the ground! Ha boom! Gah! Sleaze. Ha boom boom! Uppercut! Wait! Whoa! What even happened? Why are we duking it out now? Thought I told you to go hide, Kafka. What do you do over here for? Ah, oh, God, I'm fine. Just tell me what's going on and make it slick. Ha, <laughs> just take a look. Infected and non-infected. Don't see eye to eye most times, hey? So we split into two sides and brawl. I mean, yeah, that happens for sure, but the jailers don't care? Well, I want you to look at them carefully. Sure do love a good inmate fight. We hit the jackpot with today's shift. Ha <laughs> right you are. This is the moment. The only joy in working in this hellhole. Get their asses. A-Zonas, I'm watching you. You see that? They're living it up like nobody else here. Plus, the side that wins gets slightly better eats for the next while. So, this is all- So this is all their fun? What's stopping us from- What's stopping us from not- Just not fighting? Not fighting? Kafka, you know how I got slammed up? Took the scruff out of everyone who looked down on me and I socked him. Yeah! Hey Kafka, I reckon all the places in this goddamn world, this is the only one where you can bust a non-infected jaws and the fuzz can't be asked to slap you on the wrist. Beat someone to death, you got locked up for a while. Sides, if you're really gonna die, you're gonna die. <laughs> well let that scare him in prison. <laughs> I'm done, you get it. I'm gonna go back and make hay. You find somewhere and stay low. Bah, bah yourself. You're looking down on Kafka, you know. But man, I guess the infected and the non-infected still live in the same old clash in here. In in here. Sorry, Kafka's probably not. <laughs> not from New York. Not just living it, even. Idea's gone mutant. Super mutant. I've seen a thing. <laughs> I've seen a... Wait. We can handle a thing or two, because we've seen a thing or two. But I've got to admit, if this ain't a first for me, if Silence was watching this, she'd be sick to the bone. But, sorry Silence, because I'm different. <laughs> messier than the sitch gets, the messier the sitch gets, the more I like it. You fight your thing, and I'll see what pies I can get my fingers in. That gets me ready for the next bit. Let's go. Super, super Mansfield smash. Yeah, who sneaked their leftovers out for a box lunch? Why is there a sock 
in here? Ew! I guess that's what you get in a real prison. Y'all know... Y'all do your, what you're meant to, huh? Not finding anything I could really use, though. But... Drop dead, dirtbag! Drop dead yourself! Oh, they're really going at it! And the long-timers here don't play fair either! They've been making all sorts of weapons on the down-low. Come on, get madder! Then drop something for me! <laughs> Ugh. I got a stray one here! Ah, <laughs> oh, nurse, that girl's in trouble! Maybe I ought to go help. <laughs> Holy! Oh, oh my gosh! Sir! Sir! Are you okay? You just got ejected! Okay, he's fine. <laughs> Oops, she was hiding up her something up her sleeve, looks like. Interesting. Interesting. Yo. What's going on here? Superintendent Barton, sir! The prisoners are fighting! And you're sitting there watching? You ain't stopping them? Oh, Superintendent, time's up! I don't give a hoot which way the time is. It's our duty as jailers to maintain the prisoners. Yes, sir. Hey, you lot. Superintendent says it's time, says it's time to quit it. Colombian slang. Colombian dialect. They're in Colombia, and I'm like, Colombia equals New York. Ugh. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. This is a prison, not your constant battlefield. Y'all should be working proper, acting proper. Only way your moms, pops, and buds out there are gonna see you a day sooner. You hear me? I'm telling you this for your own good. <laughs> Here we go again. Wow, there's a couple on marks of you. You right? Right as rain, scratches, and they got got to smash in a few A-zone dirt bags for the trouble. <laughs> Fine deal to me. And it winds down like this every time? You mean Barton? Yeah, more or less. He's the jail super, always throwing up at times like these, puts on the vaudeville and hits the brakes, then says some meaningful crap. Especially moments like now when the place stops over at the city and the warden's gone. He acts like he's the lord of the prison, dropped on his head as a kid. But it ain't every time this happens, I'll tell you that. Plenty of times it don't stop for nothing. I'd say most of the time, actually. Not that often when it's when it's over, when over says, like today. But when it just won't end, you see the Barton call of safety. His what? Yup, there he is. Anthony? Looks like you really do know him. I mean, I've only seen him all dressed up before. All right, we got this boxer dude. He want to learn from Mr. Anthony's example here. He might be a prisoner, but he esteems rationality, and he does not make his first resort violence. In his downtime, he likes to read, write, listen, <laughs> listen to records. Mighty fine boy. Blech. You don't like Anthony? No, no, no. Don't get me wrong, Kafka. Ain't no one in this prison who cross Anthony. Usually, he's just like Barton said, good to other folks. But we all know he's the biggest, Muscliest goddamn shot in the place. They said when he came into prison, first thing he did was go beat up every last guy in the C zone into line. Damn right. And anybody else from C zone barely gets to meet us. But he's the real thing. Swell as a bell. A zone or B zone. He falls in with them. Yeah? I'm just boffing to have a good look at Barton. Listen to him. You think he's praising Anthony right now? He's mocking him. Anthony's the only guy he can't lift his head against. But he needs Anthony to wrangle us. So, this is the only way you can do it. We are Mansfield State Prison. State Prison. We are pilot penitentiary with special approval from the capital. We will serve as a shining example to the other states. <laughs> We're a crowd of convicts. Example your face. In short, I hope I can now reflect on yourselves. Reflect for my sake. Let's go, Anthony. You got a half an hour of hitting the books today. Mm. So... Usually you don't even see Anthony? Usually, I guess. Timetabling for the serious offenders is out of step with Oz. And most of the time, they're just staying in the C-Zone Tower. What? You want to see him? Mayhaps I do. I want to talk about something with him. 
Obviously not something the jailers can know about. Don't worry, I get you. If you're having a little heart-to-heart -heart with him, it's not like you don't have a shot. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh god. Oh god. You know, the voices always devolve into New York, but when you just go full in, god. God, it's fun. I also have my Gatorade here. One thick boy of Gatorade. All right, let's continue. Did all the New Yorkers leave? They were kind of, kind of scaring me. The infected and the non-infected stand equal in prison. Now, isn't that the picture of irony? You can't call that equal. <laughs> You're right. If we have to suffer in humanity to reach equality, then that's probably an equal we shouldn't want. Can we change the subject? I wasn't planning on continuing this one. Chat about this stuff all lofty up high and you'll sleep terrible at night. All right, Kafka went inside. Four and a half months ago? That break happened four months ago while, she, while Mansfield State Prison was stopped over at San Sophie City. Correct? Of course, any earlier and we'd have to go a year back. Wow, why does this prison look like a millionaire's house? With barbed wire around it. As a no After all, as a nomadic prison, it only visits cities on the periphery once every few months to restock and take in new inmates. The rest of the time, it's stopped in the middle of the barrens. Four months to plot a jailbreak. Can't say that's short, but I can't say that's long either. Hmm, wait, actually, that gives me a question. By the rules you gave, it should be my turn to ask. <laughs> yeah, right, go ahead then. Before that, Mayor, could you... Could I ask you to make something for us to eat? Huh? Yeah, sure, but I don't know if I can use the kitchen in here, so... You can use it! I thought this chat would probably take ages, so I actually prepped a whole bunch of ingredients. Can you cook, Miss Mayor? Sure I can cook. I'm a solo workshop. If I couldn't make grub, I would have starved to death forever ago. I mean, Ryan Lab and Rhodes Island both have cafeterias, but sometimes it's just a pain in the ass to walk over there, you know? You keep talking, I'll go make you some eats. Make sure you examine those ingredients, right? I don't want to get accused of fiddling with your food here. Hey yo! Wow, she is heavy footed. You are so hospitable. Ha! <laughs> I told you, come ch I told you, I came to chat with you. Can't dodge me, so why'd you get Mayor out of the picture? Because I still haven't told her that the energy and behind that her- I still haven't told her that energy are behind Hydro Bro. Hyde Bro. What? Wait. Don't tell me you didn't plot this together. No, I wouldn't tell her that in the first place. She only came with me to procure, procure equipment. So that's how it is. I see. Cause energy and engineering walk pretty close. You wouldn't want to sour her outlook. But given she wasn't your partner in crime, would you run that much risk telling her? I don't need you to remind me. Set it aside. What I want to know is, during all of this, what was Energy's position like? They were backing Hydebro, but had nothing to do with the business itself. It was Hydebro. It was Hydebro who tapped Energy resources to cook up their assassination plot. I see then. All right, my turn to ask then. As far as I know, Anthony's accomplices in the jailbreak included a prison's original mortician, Miss Doma, but also a woman by the name of Robin. What bugs me is that, by my intel, Robin should be one of the assassins sent to take Anthony out. But, going by your version of the events, you seem to have just one helper, and that's Ms. Kafka. Could it be Robin wasn't your doing? It appears that you have no idea how the jailbreak went, Director Musai. I said that already. On top of that, you've gotten one, th one thing wrong. I had no immediate knowledge that the assassination would take place. What? If I had any awareness of it beforehand, I wouldn't have had Kafka infiltrate the prison alone. It was far too dangerous for her, and under those circumstances, what she could accomplish was very limited. Wait, you're not telling me. You only got Anthony? He's your only lead? I am. I only realized in the past half year that Anthony was not incarcerated in the same prison as the rest of his family. Following that, I arranged for Kafka to make her way in. My thought process was at the time, 
at the time was, if she could meet up with him and break him out of jail, perfect. If she couldn't, then oh well. And then you manage to bump straight into the whole assassination? Oh, the pieces are fitting. This makes so much actual sense. But, are you sure you should have told me about this? If you'd kept me... Uh, if you'd kept me going like you were gonna stop the assassination, I'd have been way more impressed, you know. I'm no expert at that sort of thing, Director Musai. I see. At first, I thought we were alike, but looking at now, it's Miss Mayer. That's who you're like. You're the same sort of person, but you have the research you love and don't care about much else. So there's got to be a reason you were forced to care about this. And for that reason, I'm guessing is the diabolic crisis, right? Silence. That and this are unrelated matters, Director Mulesai. If you came to talk about Ifrit, then our conversation ends here. Sorry, sorry, should have kept my mouth shut. It's okay, I've only heard things about it. I don't even know what happened. As a token of apology, I'll give you a free question. You needn't. Oh? What I require isn't your apology. I require you never to bring it up again. That will do. <laughs> Got it! Let's just continue on where we left off. Remember, as far as I'm concerned, the assassination was completely unaccounted for. I didn't imagine Hydrobo would do anything- would do things that way. Well, <laughs> that goes to show you don't have a full grasp on energy's M.O. Anthony's a hidden danger. Imagine some entity that can't allow any hidden danger or uncontrollable elements. Imagine they find out they've left a little loose end. That's the end of the bros. So they spend a couple of years weaving this hit together, making it real, burying an imprisoned Anthony six feet under to cover up their evil. They could not help but to do more evil. It makes me wretch. But there are some things that can't be walked back, huh? Back to the assassination, by the way. If that woman, Robin, wasn't backed by you, then that only leaves one possibility. Robin's, assass Robin's an assassin who went turncoat midway, right? Right. So, could I trouble you to switch angles? I'm a little curious about the assassination lady and her prisonly actions. Same. Same. Given she and Anthony escaped together, I'm sure you've verified her status and experiences yourself. Robin was... True enough, initially one assassin dispatched the prison to take Anthony out. Around the time, Kafka recalled that the class between the prisoners, she hadn't been in there for too long. <laughs> Let's go back. Back where it all started. <laughs> Grit your teeth, it'll be fine in a flash. Rawr! What the hell are you yelling for? Can it? If you're injured, go down to the moor. Quit hollering here. Sorry about that. They're lined up. They've lined up something fierce over there. I'm just giving him some emergency first aid. Aid first. Yes. <laughs> It'll be fine soon enough. <laughs> he meant to say the clinic, right? Why the morgue? Ugh. Because they're right next to each other. Doc and Mortician are the same person, too. Gross. Weirds anyone out, I swear. Forget the jailers. Even if we're miles in sunshine, we don't really want to go near there. Only after the gang fights, there's no one else to go. Gotta get some treatment there. Over time, folks just end up calling the whole, the whole end morgue. Who are you? Do you need some help? Eep! Dama, miss, what you doing over here? Uh, I was just making all that up, I, uh... You're okay. I don't... It doesn't... Wait, it don't... God, God, they're all... They're all from New York. It don't really get to me. But this do. Need to come over to the clinic? N nah, this lady here helped dress it fine. Mm, leave it to me. Your bandaging skills ain't half bad. Leave it to you, I shall. Yep. I go away now. <laughs> God. Okay. Yeah, I would be creeped out too. I don't want to go down there. Leave me alone. <sighs> that scare- that scared of her? Scared her, right? To her credit, she saved more people than I can count. But she's a real oddity. I don't want to get close to her. Simple as that. I see. Alright. Try moving your arm. <laughs> it works! It works good! <laughs> Whew. 
Much better. You've got fast technique, Robin. What you used to do? Used to? I used to work for a private security firm. Private security firm? Ain't those pay big bucks? And you carry yourself good. Can't even imagine what someone like you does to end up in the slammer. All went downhill after my pop lost his job. Spent all his time drinking. Gave his liver issues. Med bills came in real expensive. I took a risk and... I see, yeah. Darn. You ain't had it easy. At all. You? Me? <laughs> I was a business guy. Wife and her lover wanted to get rid of me. Snatch my assets. End of it. They took hell to me. And I killed them to save my life. Simple as. Anywho. <laughs> so, you know, I'm just your regular Joe Schmo murderer. Double homicide. It's cool. <laughs> it's cool. Anywho, I owe you one. I've been here for lord knows how many years. I know a bit about everything that goes on. If you got any questions, ask them to me. I've seen a few folk from A zone or B zone enter the C zone tower from time to time. How'd they get in? Huh? Oh, them. They got dragged over to C zone to clean the big guy's room. Cleaning? Yep. Sides from jailers, that ain't actually much. That there ain't actually much people on the staff. Might be an official slammer, and it seems the paychecks ain't bad, but nobody wants to work at a prison, much less a giant nomadic prison like this, roving the barren lands all day long. If they ever want to do something inside the prison, it's when they stop over at the city. Get a few people to come in, get it done while they're stopped. Can't get it done in the time? They just gotta come with it. Wait until someone's sent out so they can send them back, or just take them to the next city and send them off there. Last we stopped at San Sophie City, they hired a bunch of detector Decorators. That's fancy. Been a half month since we, since we left and they're still working at it. Ah, so they weren't the prisoners. These worker, those workers all over the place. Yep, see one right there. Wow, everyone observe. Oh my gosh, it's Pinecone. <laughs> and split. <laughs> Miss Mina, where are you going over here now? Uh, excuse me, I was looking for a, a WC. Made the wrong turn on accident. Ah, no problem. Superintendent said as long as you don't go anywhere important, no worries going on where you go. But you, don't stand there if you got nothing. Scram back to your quarters. Eep. See, they ain't the prisons, folks, but they act like the center of the universe. Warden's given orders that they're to eat good, drink good. So, the jailers used to sidestep and everywhere look damn near constipated seeing any of them. I think it makes them look pretty cool. <laughs> hey. Ugh. And why are you two just chatting? Hey, hey, sir, got a newbie. Cut us some slack? Hm. I'll give you five more minutes. How, how did you do that? How did you have that? <laughs> I've been here a while. You always find your way to something. If you want some, I can give you a little. Don't need it. More interested in the prisoners entering C zone. Yeah, there's never really any staff around, but I gotta have someone to blame for the hygiene after all. That. You don't think it's these jailers who've done it, do you? So those bunch get hauled off to clean up the place? Yep. Not just C zone. Same goes for everywhere else. Us inmates clean the whole damn prison. But dang, if it ain't a little. In a cushy job. You don't need to work in the factories and you get to wander all over. Sometimes you get to be in the passage, only the jailers go, drinking up the scenery. Passages? Heh, <laughs> I guess you wouldn't know. Second floor's got this corridor. Only staff get to go through it. You can see the whole view from them there. Been there once before. Woo! Darn good sight. But the jailers in here are some real low lives. The jailers watching me that time point out this big stone stonemaker outside told me they'd stood it specifically for the convicts just asked for who exactly without even thinking he said for all those convicts who escaped there's been people in here who really did escape on their own sums and some they let out deliberately why because they all die out there in the barrens in the end couldn't you break out while they stop at a city hey you think that no one else had that idea before Every time they stop over, every single jail is on max alert, cranked to 11. Even the guy like Anthony would be, wouldn't be able to make it out. Anthony. Heh, <laughs> but in my opinion, he doesn't need to make it out. Why? Anthony's a prisoner. 
But who doesn't respect him? When the jailers talk to him, they're scared to even breathe. He doesn't make any trouble, but his strength and reputation goes for miles. Did you know building that underground library was his suggestion to the warden? That's some clout. <laughs> Don't blab about this everywhere, but we all feel in private if Anthony wanted to stay in this prison forever, then that'd be nothing to do with the, with the, with the, with the warden. Anthony is a real master of, <laughs> oh my gosh. Anthony is the real master of this place. But it sounds pe peculiar, don't it? How the fellow like Anthony end up in prison? And he spent so long here, yet nothing's happened. You've been chatting for far too long. Back to your quarters. Yes, sir. Right away now. Your wounds... Your wounds are no problem then. Uh, no problem. None. Robin wrapped me up real good. Much better. Then don't you dawdle. Just now. That one took a glance at me. Huh. <laughs> that jailer actually gave me a shake. Gave a shake about me. What in Sam Hill? Well, that's that for now. You got anything? Come find me again. Got it. Thanks. Let's go. This music. The smooth jazz. Pop. Looks like Anthony's prickler, pricklier problem than, I've, than I'd heard. Who are you? Did you receive a sum of money today? Your generous Jay? Correct. Go on and get your father's treatment. Of course, if you want to make it your own, if you want to make your own life better with it, that's no problem either. In fact, I personally recommend you do so. Why are you giving me money? It's in the name. I'm generous. Though, I regret to tell you, if you want to treat your pappy with that money, it's gonna be, it's not gonna be enough. What do you want me to do? You're smart, Robin. Miss, I like dealing with smart people. Here, I'll lay my cards out to you. I want you to... Enter Mansfield State Prison and kill someone. Mansfield? I heard that's a prison you never get out of. Don't you worry about that. As long as you can do it, I have the means to let you out. You can think it over, Miss Robin. Ooh, the plot thickens. I know this is risky beyond hell. I know, I know things look bad, but sick as you are, I'll do what, I'll do what I can. Ooh, that's so spicy. And gosh, they they actually went good on their promise. That's a first. Robin's not a professional assassin? No, not at all. Even I could tell that much. She had none of the air about her. Looks like the material looks like the material I had on her, on her was correct. She really was a security worker. Her skills certainly should have invited trust, but this is all smacks. But all this smacks a little weirdness to me. What? Why'd they hire her is my question, but it's not too important. Skip it for now. More importantly, it seems most of the assassins were like Robin, that, and they'd been hired solo. They'd have no idea that if they had any competition and no clue who their employer was. How many assassins did hire, hide bro hire in the end? Your guess is as good as mine, but, just like I said before, the bros get paid big to get rid of Anthony. Money with their blood and sweat in it. How did the assassins get into the prison? I'm sure you, I'm sure you looked into it beforehand too. Mansfield State Prison was established jointly by a few of the state's municipal governments and it stands alone. Mm, the way I've seen it described, its founding intended of the prison was to serve its state breaking new ground. Development was rapid, but crime rates stayed high and rampant. So at the time, it was a half abandoned industrial platform. It was Randall, the current warden, who suggested establishing the prison to the city governments. All at once, they had solution for what to do with the platform and where to put its inmates. Any questions so far? Isn't the answer pretty much obvious, though? The idea is that the prison gets used as a lockbox to shove any troublesome person, and it's people, and it's the people none of the city wants to bother with. Getting inside the prison isn't the tough part. Miss Kafka never told me how exactly she got in there. Am I right? Of course, the prison is still a prison. Getting out is tough. Like I said, it only visits cities on the edge once every few months. The rest of the time, it stops in the barrens. And a convict escapes out there, they're stuck in endless barrens until they die. Here, here's the thing. Robin mentioned it. A mysterious person promised it. There was a way to get them out for sure. So as long as they didn't slip up and get themselves killed in there and successfully ran the hit on Anthony, 
They just need to wait for the extraction. But they sent in a lot of other assassins. Would Hydro really be able to retrieve each and every one? Of course not. Which is why I said none of them knew about the others. And once they were inside, even if they figured it out, there'd be no escape. Their only option would be to kill Anthony or die trying. It's simple. Effective method. This is true. But I still don't understand. Why? Simon Co. had shut down. His core members were all in prison. Hydro never once touched them. Why move against Anthony alone, of all people? Oh. Do I actually have to start from there? What? What do you mean? Alright, Miss Silence, I know I didn't really care much- I know- wait, I know you didn't really care about this much in the past. But, maybe you pulled something so bold, and brash, and succeeded precisely because you didn't realize. Sorry. Sorry, I'm not making fun of you here. In fact, you can take it as me complimenting you. Right, so as for your question, first of all, let me answer it with a question. Miss Silence, have you ever thought about how, if you wanted to dispose of Anthony in prison, assassins are actually one of the least efficient methods? No. Because there are much better ways. Buying off the jailers, maybe bribing the warden. But sending an assassin to dress up as a prisoner, get into prison, and kill another prisoner? When you hear it out loud, sounds dumb, doesn't it? Because they couldn't? Yep, because they couldn't. Woo! From the way you reacted to this prison's history just now, I'm gonna need to give you a walkthrough from this side of the top, Miss Silence. What do you mean? Do you still remember Kafka calling the prison Superintendent Barton? What did he say? We are Mansfield State Prison. State Prison. We are pilot penitentiary with special approval from the capital. We will serve as a shining example to the other states. And don't forget it. What about it? Pilot special approval. You know what that implies? What? I'm really dense. Help me out here. It implies business. Gasp! In Colombia, the most profitable business is where the power is. This prison's a model case. What are you? I'm telling you this... Pri I'm telling you this prison is in fact Warden Randall's money machine. Have you ever heard of for-profit prisons, lady? Where have you been living under a rock? But it's a prison! Sure it is. Heavily guarded prison. Send whoever you don't like in here for a fate worse than death. Send whoever you want a safe garden here to be protected. Whatever you need, as long as you have the money. Don't you go, wow, that's a super-sized business opportunity? But in that case, could Hydro not just pay the warden the requisite amount and he'd help them do their work? One second, you're stunned beyond belief hearing it, and next you force yourself to switch lanes and rail your thought into full steam? You really are amazing, Miss Silence. I don't feel like you're complimenting me. Your query's totally reasonable, but truth is, I don't have a clear-cut answer either. But we can work backwards. In conclusion, they didn't do that, and surely they tried it before, so the only possible answer is they failed. Personally, I think it's because the warden didn't want to get himself stuck between a rock and a hard place. Or, perhaps Anthony's mistreatment could be brought could be bought, but Anthony had a massive influence in the prison. If he died, you sure can handle it like a typical prisoner death. A lot of people love Randall's position, and as far as I know, he's got major guile too. I don't think he'd take the risk. Somebody like him, it's more like likely he took Hydro's money and just did nothing. I remember Anthony once saying he'd fled into Ironford City before he was finally arrested. Perhaps his father had some involvement in this affair. Hmm, yeah, that's a possible that's possible as well. Old Smith used to be as be a fair household name in Bunker Hill City. Sending his son to prison for his protection wouldn't surprise me one bit. But that doesn't answer my question. I've already answered it, Miss Silence. You're smart. You just don't want to believe it. I don't understand. What I mean is that they couldn't do it in Mansfield State Prison, but that doesn't mean they couldn't do it in Bunker Hill City Prison. Wait, you don't mean his family... Looks like you finally understand, Miss Silence. Congratulations! You said that Hybro never touched Anthony's family. That's a faulty assumption. 
The only reason they're not dead is because they don't need to be. Maybe you just can't comprehend it, but in Colombia, death's far from the worst thing that could happen to a person. Moreover, after dealing with Simon Co., Hydro had no competitors left. They obviously wouldn't ever let the Simon family turn their next page. They said as much. The Simons posed no more threat. So once they discovered Anthony was in the prison, they had no influence over it, they decided Anthony was a threat? Wow. Uh, <laughs> you have a lot of emotion suddenly. Correct. As long as Anthony lives, they always face the risk of a comeback. So Hydro had to grip over their local backup, over their local lockup, but none at all in the prison a couple states over, Mansfield State Prison. No. Wait, they're a business. Even if our energy selection is backing them, what in the world gives them any say in a local prison? Well, what in the world indeed? You're... You're not... No! I refuse to! Dinner is ready! Eat something, you guys! Eat! You look like you've seen a ghost silence! I need a moment to cool my head. Mayor, if I could trouble you to continue explaining the events to Director Mills, I... Hmm? Sure thing. Silence, you want to eat on the, on the side and listen? No, I need somewhere a little quieter. You can head in the kitchen then. There's a table there. Right, thank you. It's Boston. You didn't... <laughs> did you... Wait. <laughs> Wait, really? Um, y did you, you, you missed the, um, the prisoner's voices. <laughs> Lol. Okay, so where did you leave off? We finished rubbing Robin's past and what she was doing in the prison. Ah, I got it. Next should be the, uh, the next should be her first failed hit. Uh, or from Kafka's perspe perspective, her successfully getting in touch with Anthony. Wow, so this is where the two of them cross paths? Yep. Yep. <laughs> Let me guessy guess. Robin's thing about entering C zone for cleaning, that's it, right? Mm hmm. Kafka went for it too. Kafka went for it too. I imagine she heard it was the safest way to meet Anthony. Haha. <laughs> now that's straight to the punch. I like it. All the middle stuff's pretty nothing. You want to hear it? Hmm. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't intrigued. I feel like I, I'd hear some pretty interesting things. But let's stick to the jailbreak itself first. So you want to hear Kafka or Robin's side? Kafka! I leave in shame. Okay. I'll keep... I'll keep with Robin's. Ah! Cool. It was a whole month since she went inside then. All the while, she kept her head down and worked. Finally clawed out the chance to go into C-Zone for cleaning. Used every material at her disposal. Made all the weapons she could count on. Packed them on her person. Sounds like she was pretty amply prepared. Did she get sussed by Anthony then? Or stopped by Kafka? Nope. Something wild happened. Doo -doo -doo -doo. All present. Here. 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 Here! Hey, you're fresh me too, right? I seen you before at the factory. Three. <laughs> Listen up! You got new inmates among you, so I'll repeat the rules. A zone and B zone are responsible for different rooms. The two of you will take you separately, but you will all get one turn cleaning up Mr. Anthony's room. <laughs> Why is that? It's called respect, you understand? A zone with me, B zone with him. I'll make it brief. Once you're in, don't touch what you shouldn't. Don't even think about taking what you shouldn't. Do your work, especially when it comes to Mr. Anthony's room. You are to clean this room like you care for your own mommy. Is that clear? <laughs> like I give a slug ass about my mommy. <laughs> you shove it. I'm saying this for the first time it's here. Don't give me trouble, you hear me? I got it, I got it. Behave and we'll all give you some playtime in the empty sea cell. Whew. Now that's a perk. I'll be as good as a baby then. <laughs> Enough. You got your cleaning gear? Come on, you. If so, we'll get you ready to go upstairs. Wow, ain't this a little slice of heaven. So these are the C-Zone cells. I finally got in. Every story, every story has four cells. Each cell only links to the elevator. But the style of these cells is so different to ours. It feels like 
There's no privacy here at all. Get down to it! Stop gawking around! Over here is Anthony's. Mr. Anthony's room. Looks like the other side is already there. Just get in there and clean up. Don't think about brawling with the B-Zone here. I'll be watching you. This jail is not like the others. Real domineering. Focus. I finally get to see Anthony. In all the photos, he's built crazy strong. If I took him on directly, I'd have no chance of winning. But no matter how strong the person, you can always find a weak point. There's a chance. Just clean up while you're looking for it. Even if finding the weak point all I get, I'll take it. Pop, protect me. Ow! Ow! Huh? What's going on? Oh my gosh! Anthony, did you do this? Did you do this? Like, gasp. A jailer and a few bees owners got taken out? Who are you? Why kill me? You don't need to know. Uh, you don't need to know who wants you dead, Mr. Anthony. All you need to know is this is where you die. Huh? <laughs> Boss, the A-Zones team's here. Come fast. <laughs> no problem, bud. You take that batch out. Don't go kill him now. We still gotta make it out of here. <laughs> wow, y'all laugh way too much. No way. They're here to take Anthony out too? Why do... Take this. Why... Why not... Why not you take this? Why... Why don't you... Why don't you take this? Yaha! Get out of my way, brat. Gah! He knocked that girl... Stupid in one punch. Ha! <laughs> Did that jailer just smirk right now? Ugh, now's not the time to worry. This one's coming for me. I gotta deal with him first. Kafka! Man, if we had followed Kafka's, Kafka's story, it'd be like, and then Kafka went to Anthony's cell, and then they saw that Anthony, some people got knocked out, and then Kafka got knocked out. End of story. <laughs> Lol. Okay, fine, fine. Follow Robin's story. Dun, 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 dun. Ah! That sounded like brass knuckles, man. Huh! Ha! This prisoner's fierce. Knocked all the other ones down in just a few hits. Go to hell. This jailer is a mighty one too. She's just guarding it though, seems like. I wonder why. Huh! Hmm. Why don't ya? I never- I feel like I wouldn't have spelled it that way though. Why? Huh. Maybe I would. You're missing- you're entirely missing the don't- like the do part of the don't. Which could literally make it any- any word that has not- like any- any contraction that has not would work. <laughs> Crud, the jailer's down. Just me left. But I end up fighting with him here, it's gonna be a mess to explain afterwards. And you! Think, come on, this is my only option to throw fists? Hmm. <sighs> come on, Anthony, get him. Just pick him up. You're fast. Anthony rescued me? I might not know who you are, but you shouldn't be doing this. Not this, right in front of my eyes. Wow, he's smiling and that's kind of freaking me out. <laughs> that's knocking and you still care for all the folk? You're a real gentleman, Miss Anthony. When did he... <laughs> right here, miss. Don't be scared of me. Just blame it on your rotten luck. Relax. Besides from Anthony, we don't want to kill nobody. Just take a lie down. Shit. Ow, my tail. Ugh. My little raccoon tail. He got me. He got me! I can't think clear. Let's... You a warm welcome, Anthony. Dead.
and he was never seen again. Well, at least Robin lasts a little bit longer than Kafka. Kind of rooting for Kafka, though. I didn't expect you to be this good of a cook. Wow. Mm-hmm. Bet you didn't. Anyway, she got caught up in another assassin's attempt and lost consciousness then? That must have sucked. Yeah, unlucky her. So, how does this assassination pan out? We know Anthony must have won, but this was an attempt on his life in prison. Couldn't have gone without comment. Yep. But because Robin was out during that time, we don't- we have to go from Kafka's side. Kafka- I just watched Kafka get knocked out too. From her side? Oh yeah, everyone was standing on the side of the wall. <sighs> well, she was also unconscious. Okay. That's what I said! That's what I said! Okay. Oh, but didn't get- didn't Kafka get knocked out by that convict too? <laughs> oh, she sandbagged that one. So she says. Oh, okay, that adds up. It doesn't seem like your style. It does seem like your style. Yep. Yeah, just ragdoll. <laughs> Yo, someone's throwing punches. Just freaking ragdoll, man. Talk. Whose people sent you? <laughs> you wouldn't? No. He's out. These people really were. What if we made him sound like this? He'd be so stupid sounding. Okay. <laughs> Fine. Thinking about it, won't do anything. Let's see how these prisoners are first. Prisoners. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're doing fine. Looks like none of them crossed the river. Oh, ain't, ain't that good. Kafka. And then there's this girl. I don't know who you are, but you helped me back there. Thank you, girl stranger. You can call me... You can call me Kafka. Hmm. You're not out? Uh, don't move. Just shift a bit to the right. Block the monitors. Is this okay? Golden. Surveillance shouldn't see me now. <laughs> Lucky for me, I checked around while I was cleaning the rooms. Who are you? I told you. Call me Kafka, but I'm here to help you. But this is a real snafu. I'm gonna let you... I'm just gonna leave you a slip of paper and call it there. Didn't expect those guys to suddenly go off. What in the world is happening? Not the right place to talk about that. Know anywhere good? The jailer should be coming over to see what the ruckus was. We can go to the clinic. That'll work. What in blue blazes? Anthony, what the hell are you doing? That's what I'd like to ask, Barton. These prisoners snuck in with the intent to kill me. What the hell are you doing? What? Is the true Superintendent Barton? I witnessed Mr. Anthony fight off two inmates. What? Weren't you watching them? The two in the two of them knocked me out. I guess they were no very strong. Oh, quite no very strong. Ugh, good for nothing. How do you want me to explain this all to the warden? Let's get a grip on the present first, Barton. These two are the assassins. You can deal with them. Ahem, right, but Mr. Anthony, you see, we can't just take your word for all this. I know. I've suffered minor injuries. Please, I, I need a trip to the clinic first. They knocked everyone else unconscious. It might behoove you to send them all to the clinic, too. Once we're there, I'll explain things in fine detail. All right, all right. What are you bunch of naval grazing for? Throw, your, throw, the, <laughs> throw those two bodies in the morgue and drag them all with you. Y yes sir sir <laughs> Throw him in the morgue. The jailers are gone, Anthony. What happened? I saw them all looking perturbed. Wait, what happened? I saw them all- I saw them all looking perturbed some. I'd like to know too. Alright, this place is safe, young Kafka. Doma is my friend. Uh, if I could call anyone in this prison trustworthy, it would be her. First off, drop that young. I'm just some random little shorty. Wow, that's what I should say to people. <laughs> people ask me, what high school do you go to? First of all, stop that. I'm just a random shorty. Apologize, Miss Kafka. I mean, <laughs> apologize, damn it. <laughs> Don't be mean to my little waifu. Uh, apologies, Miss Kafka. Man, okay, you, for a prisoner, you're politer than all the people outside. This is how Anthony is. He don't hold courtesy for anybody. Yeah, I get it. You look like a haymaker. But you've got manners. Oh, 
Yeah, I get it. You look like a haymaker, but you got manners for days, too. Not surprising everyone else in here thinks you're a juggernaut. You flatter me. So it's like you're getting healed up, going to the, uh... You're getting... Oh, you're still there. You're getting healed up, getting bandaged, and then they're like, Oh, slip in the head, and then they throw you into the incinerator by accident. <laughs> Sorry, this is also the morgue. Well done. My turn to ask the questions. You apparently here to aid me? That means you know where my assassins came from, I suppose. Uh, before that, I need to ask you something first. Please do. You know, you know what with your family, or I guess your dad is one of the Simon Co's named after. Anyway, do you know exactly what happened there? As long as you do, I can explain things a lot simpler. My father was detained on more than 10 charges. I know the circumstance couldn't have been simple, but I had no time to figure find out concretely. Okay, you know, yeah, that's good enough for me. Um, Simon Co. Uh, thanks to Ill... Ill... What's it? Do you mean illicit? Yeah, that. Illicit. Smuggling of Oniginium goods. Anyway, the company got shut down and the core members all went to prison. So, your whole family's serving in Bunker Hill right now. Uh... Heck? Anthony slams a fist onto the nearby table. Everything on top of it rattles off. Anthony? I'm alright. I prepared myself to hear this a long time ago. I'm already happier than you could believe knowing they're not dead. Alright, who sent them? Hide bro. Hide bro? So it was you. Let me just think. What did Silence say? Uh, right. Your family. The Simons. We're competing with them of some kind of line. You were camping 50% of the profits over this? And there was plenty of friction, so they all wanted to just camp your share too? And then they did it. Pretty simple. Hide bro. I heard my father mention that name often. I even visited their company as a guest once. They did all this over a bit of selfishness? I heard the similar events before. I just never expected it to happen around me. Anthony, are you alright? Need me to use my art to settle some mine? Mine some? No thank you, Doma. I told you. I prepared myself for this long ago. I didn't expect the reality to come so sudden. That's all. I believe you, Miss Kafka. And there's no reason you have to deceive me about this. Seeing how things are, those assassins ought to be from Hydebro. Why only come at this point? That, I have no idea. But judging from my experience, that wasn't the last of them just now. They've sent a whole bunch of people to take you out for sure. So, uh, we should probably call this the very beginning. How about you? How about you? I presume you're not here to help fend those killers off for me? Are you? What's your objective, Miss Kafka? Me? Mm, that's kind of tough to explain fast, but let's say someone trusts me to help you break out of here. You want to get out and take revenge, right? You got a you got a life sentence, and it's the kind without parole. You want to leave this place? Then you're gonna you've got one choice, and that's jailbreak. And that's why I'm here to help. Obviously, if you don't want to peace out and you're gonna stay here forever, it's not like I'm gonna force you to go. Jailbreak. But no soul has ever made a clean escape from this prison. Hey, say that if you want, but you can't knock until you try it, right? <laughs> You've been in this prison for a good while now, Miss Kafka. Hmm? Yeah, sure have. Then you should have heard some things about me. Yep. They all say you're one, of the, you're one of the most powerful prisoners and most free. Pretty much everyone thinks you're strong as heck. I think you're pretty strong, too, right now. Staying calm in times like these. But fact is, that's not what happen- That's not what hap- That's not what's happening. Even with all these supposed charisma I have as a prisoner, I can't bend the jailers, let alone the warden. I should never have earned my current standing. Eh, that's true enough, but you earned it now, so hey. In reality, what I earned is the turnkey's favor. At least, what little I know is that the warden himself said it. He told them to be slightly nicer with me. All these years I've had suspicions. After I reached Ironforge City, I was arrested. Then I came to this prison. Did my father arrange for this from the start? For seeing something and sending me here in advance? Such things have already spun my mind. 
Oh, Silence mentioned that too. She said there was- she said there was just one possibility though. Silence. Is that the name of your backer? Uh, well, whatever. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, let's just throw names out here. Name drop, name drop, and you get a name drop. I'll be sure to shank- <laughs> I'll be sure to shank this friend of yours when I get out of here. Anyway, it's just one possibility as you say. If I want to know the reason for sure, I'll need to get out. This is something only I can shine a light on. Anthony, is it really alright to tell her this? It's fine. I believe you for the moment, Miss Kafka. Thus, I'm willing to level with you. Even if you didn't show up, even if I'd long since, long since gotten used to this life in prison, I'd still yearn incessantly to leave here. I can obtain most of what I want here, but not since the beginning have I found the faintest outline of how to get out. So, in truth, I should be the one asking you, Miss Kafka. Please help me break out. Wow, this story is pretty short. Man, anything. I feel like- I feel like everything that I'll compare, like, every big, big event to is now near light, and anything that's shorter than near light, I'd be like, wow, this is so short. <laughs> or this is so easy. <laughs> After that, it should be Robin's. Before we get there, Miss Mayor, hmm? There's something else I want to ask you. What's up? I don't know nearly as much as silence. Not a problem. This is something you know just as well as she does. What do you think of the whole diabolic crisis? If I'm not mistaken, you were part of that project, weren't you? Eh, uh, I don't have a clue. We're, we engineer folks usually just hand out the equipment. Maybe just give some professional advice when the equipment gets made, but we don't usually try to figure out what the experiment is all about. I just know how to turn it out in the end. Silence brought Ifri with her to Rhodes Island, a place she barely has a working relationship with. After that, sorry I ended up taking responsibility for everything that happened and left Rhine Lab. If you're trying to learn about what went down there, you're asking the wrong girl. No, it's not like the incident itself that I want to know more about. I mean, incidents like that one are a dime a dozen at Rhine Lab. Hmm, so why are you asking? I'm asking because I want to know, from your perspective, what kind of a person do you think Silence is? And about, and how about Saria? Hmm, I think Silence is pretty a pretty serious girl. Honestly, I've always felt that way. I've, it's always felt all, <laughs> it's always felt that's the way all the researchers should be. You're right, she is very smart. She's very perceptive too. Plus, she's had more than a few successful projects under her belt. From what I've heard, the structural director is hoping to prime Silence to take over. Wow, you mean Silence is gonna be calling the shots at Structural? That's so cool! Yeah, even I wanna butter up, butter her up now. As for Saria, I don't actually know her that well. I mean, defense isn't like the other departments. I hardly ever saw her in Rhodes Island, let alone talk to her. But the biggest impression I have of her is she's really cautious. Going from what I know about the diabolic crisis, I mean, she was the one who hit the brakes on the whole project. She even took the blame for everyone, everything and quit. Even though experiments going wrong isn't actually that uncommon there. There was rumors about my coworkers that the Diabolic Crisis was some kind of conspiracy. I don't know that, about, that much about that stuff though. Besides, Ifrit's having a great time at Rhodes Island all around, so I guess it wasn't a big deal. Huh? So the test subject is doing well at Rhodes Island? Yeah, it's like she was always on top of the whole world. Oh, and here I thought. Well, gotta hand it to them. Rhodes Island sounds like a pretty impressive company. But, well, there's one thing I can tell you. Sorry I didn't leave Rhine Lab just because of the Diabolic Crisis. It's just one of a whole string of events that led to it, and there's more to it. It might have been the straw that broke the, bur beast, uh, the burden beast back, though. The primary reason was that she had beef with Control. Huh? Control? That's right, Saria and Control actually got along okay at first, you know? But, like you said, Saria was way too cautious. She thinks all scientific research should be contained. That's not how Control saw it, though. They would have been no Rhine Lab if she did. How could I say this? Let's try an analogy. Let's say we have a line, Saria's line. Rhine Lab's always done things above board. They've come close to crossing the line, but they've never actually done it. So Saria never said anything. But that whole string of events, the diabolic crisis included, meant that someone was trying to cross that line. They might have even crossed it already, but Saria wouldn't have that. But Control didn't care. Why's that? Miss Meyer, 
Tell me, do you actually care about the whole thing with Anthony that Miss Silence and I were talking about at all? Uh, well, now that I know more about what happened to him, I guess it's a bad thing that he got out. Something like that, I guess. You see, you're honest and kind, but you couldn't care less. You care more about your research. Your Meepo. Your Meepo. I gotta hand it to you, though. Meepo's a really great design. Mind if I touch it? Sure thing. Have at it. That sounded like it went well. <laughs> so cute. You were working on your design too just now, right? Yep, I got a couple new ideas. I'm gonna try them out as soon as we're back at Rose Island. <laughs> see, Control's gonna like this too. She can see very far ahead of her. Sometimes I get the feeling that not even the sky above can keep her from seeing beyond it. There probably isn't a single person in the world who knows just where she sets her sights. Even I have only a vague idea of what's going on in her mind. Eh? I've only caught a glimpse of her when she's giving speeches. Never knew she'd be like that too. That's right. There's a lot of things that she just doesn't care about. To her, as long as it's research as long as her research isn't being blocked, that line might as well not exist. That drove a wedge between her and Saria. But why are you telling me all this? Shouldn't you be talking to silence? No, she tucked her tail between her legs and ran away. I'm not sure what I'd do with this information. I'm telling you this because you don't know. I figured that you two probably could have gotten along, so I wanted you to get a better idea of the kind of person she is. Besides, I actually want to be friends with you myself. I like researchers like you. So pure. If I'm not mistaken, you voluntarily signed up for Rhodes Island? Yeah, I wanted to make a change of atmosphere. I wanted to change of atmosphere. Mind telling me why? Hmm, I guess there wasn't really much of a reason. Alright, well if you ever do come back to Rhine Lab, Though, you should think about transferring to our department. Hmm, I'll give it some thought. Don't worry, we've got time. All right, why don't we get back to that story? Why don't we? Hmm, you sure about this? Yeah, I want to try. Hmm. Well, hello there. Where am I? This here's my room. <laughs> this here's my room. This is the prison clinic. <laughs> I know who you are. I know who you are too. The name's Dama. What am I doing here? Right? There was a fight and I got dragged into the mess. You passed out, Miss Robin. Anthony? How come you know my name? Dama has a list of prisoners here. You're a hitman too, aren't you? Gasp. Doma found this weapon on you, and you were there. I could only arrive at this conclusion. Of course, if you really aren't, you are free to prove me wrong. Regardless of whether that is truly the case, I hope you could at least listen to what I have to say. Everything I'll be telling you is under the assumption that you came here to kill me. I mean no offense, and I hope you don't get the wrong impression. I know who sent you here. They are the ones who orchestrated my family's downfall. They are behind my imprisonment, here for the past six years. And I've made my decision to break out of this prison, to get to the end of it. I can tell your combat prowess is superb, and I'm hoping you'd be willing to abandon your contract as a hitman and come help me. It's as simple as that. I... You don't need to give me an answer right away. I need a lot of time to prepare. You have a lot of time on your hands as well. If you want to kill me, you are free to keep trying. I could, you could also give up. If you are interested in helping me, just pay the clinic a visit and let Dama know. Who is it? Mr. Anthony, Captain Barton was wondering if you were doing okay. Are you hurt? Nothing serious, just a few scrapes. Let him know to wait a little longer. I'll be finished here soon. Right, not a problem, take your time. I need to deal with Barton. You should head back and I and think this offer through, Miss Robin. Do, 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 do. That was quick. <laughs> I thought Anthony was some kind of simple, kind-hearted guy, but it sounds like I'm not giving him enough credit. Hmm? What makes you say that? We know for sure that Robin was there just to kill him, but he didn't have any concrete proof. Yet, he still made her that offer. Really? I thought that was pretty reckless of him. 
If Robin wasn't there to kill him and she tipped him off to the jailers, what happens then? <laughs> well, that's the part I like about him. Think about it. You're fresh fish. No one knows who you are. Meanwhile, Anthony's built a reputation, a prestige for himself over the years. Whose words do you think carry more weight? Let's take a step back. Say Barton and the guards are really... They really believed her. Do you think they could have done anything about that? They couldn't have acted on that information. Well, now that you mention it, I guess there wasn't much they could have done even if she ratted him out. <laughs> you think it's reckless, and you'd be right under normal circumstances. This is a risky move if he didn't have his prestige, or whatever influence is the better word to use here. But what I really think is interesting is that those who know how to build prestige for themselves usually don't do something like that. Hmm, and why is that? That's because what he says was also a threat. He's telling her, you could tell him, but it's not gonna do you any good. When you hear that, it doesn't really sound like something that someone who's really got prestige would say, right? Heh, <laughs> you're right, it does sound like a threat. That's what I mean. Besides, did Anthony ever say anything about what he did to appease Barton? Mmm, oh, he said he'd volunteered to be put in solitary for half a month. Everyone knew he wasn't the one at fault, but he chose to be punished to get this thing behind him. Huh? Uh, I can almost imagine that grin on Barton's face when Anthony told him he was willing to accept punishment. But he still held back. <laughs> Such a hard guy to deal with. I think he probably just figured out Robin wouldn't rat him out. Hmm, it's possible. I won't deny it. By the way, Miss Silence is really taking her time, isn't she? Yeah, you're right. I'll go take a look. And now I deliver this monologue. Oh, that was it. Wow. Wow. We're making great time. Oh, silence, you're back. Welcome back. I'm glad to see that you're alive and not eaten. I'm not really sure what owls get eaten by, but I'm happy that you're alive. Silence, you alright? I'm alright. Why are you over here now? Oh, why are you over here now? Cause you've been over here for ages, just checking in. Eat that bottle of wine there, you're drinking now? Just a little. Director Mulesai? She's still back there waiting for us. Where are you in the story? Up until Anthony started trusting Kafka to help him, she also told me some stuff about what went down between Control and Saria. Did she now? Want me to tell you? No, not necessary for the time being. You look like you were doing terrible. Was it some bad crap Director Millsai told you about? No, though it was, in a sense. No, but yes. I'm... Um, I can't put it straight. My mind is in disarray. I have some regrets. I feel as though I may have done something I'm not equipped to do. You mean this whole breakout? Yes. I should have apologized to you, Mayor. For what? Or what for? I shouldn't have gotten you involved. I was too cowardly. I couldn't bear it. And I told you uh, about all this. I made you assume responsibility with me. Whoa, I don't really mind, you know. In fact, you can trust me. It makes me pretty freaking happy, Silence. And I mean, really, I've... All I've done is take a trip back to Columbia with you. Actually, there's something I haven't told you. What is it? Behind this incident, behind Hydro, is the energy section. Huh? Energy? You and the rest of engineering are so close, closely tied with energy. I've been unsure whether I should tell you. Oh. Hmm, I'm fine, really. We're pretty tied up work-wise with energy, but... Uh, yeah, but honestly, I'm not the world's, big, world's biggest fan of their section. Or more like, I'm kind of terrified of Energy's director. What's the director of en energy like? Eh? Haven't you met more than a few times? But sometimes he comes over to our... Oh, haven't met more than a few times, but sometimes he comes over to our end just to see. He'll drop in our meetings, too. He opens his mouth and you go, wow. He's a big, sm <laughs> he's a big smart cookie. But he gives off this kind of feeling like... I don't know how to capture it. He, like, cares more about what our staff can be can be used to make, or what it can be exchanged for. Things like that. Oh, used to make. I see. And, like, since Saria took all the blame and resigned, I 
It feels like us and the energy section got like even more tied up in each other. All these times some kind of weird work got scheduled and I couldn't even do any of my own crap. And that's why I wanted to make a chance to send myself off to Rhodes Island. Even if closure's a little weird too, I'm way happier doing my work at Rhodes. So, that's it. Oh, so that's it? Anyways, don't worry about me too much, Silence. In fact, I feel like you've done something good, right? Some- something good. <gasps> Cat Mama! Man, I need- I need to like, solidify a voice for Cal. But I haven't done that yet. <laughs> this intel and analysis you have provided is extremely valuable. It compels me to know your viewpoint strongly, Operator Silence. In that case... <laughs> wow, I was like, I came up with this voice for Cal. And then Cal started talking to Silence and I was like, they have the same voice. But first of all... But first of all, this intel's origins are clearly internal to Rhinelab. Divulging internal intelligence to third parties without permission inspires me not to place trust in you. However, from your behavior, I can trust you are in no way an imprudent person. Therefore, I require an explanation. This is intel I arrived... This is intel I arrived at through collection and analysis via my own personal channels. It has no direct relation to Rhinelab. But you discovered... But your discovery is a matter like this should have prompted submission to internal channels to be dealt with there. Rhodes Island has no capacity to educate this incident. No, I had no expectation that Rhodes Island would be able to. I simply wanted to aid this person. I want to hear your viewpoint. Why mine? Or should I say, why Rhodes Island? As of now, I trust Rhodes Island more than I do Rhinelab. What? What of Rhinelab are you skeptical about? I don't know. But... Mm, I don't know, but... <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know what I'm skeptical of. But I've come to work here for a long while now. I've seen with my own eyes what Rhodes Island is doing. I, at the very least, know what Rhodes Island is doing. What you see may not be what you get, Operator Silence. Moreover, it may be that you haven't noticed, but from your intel, it's very likely this feline named Anthony was only immediately arrested the next state over as a setup by his father. In all likelihood, a situation that dragged, that arranged long before, they'd arranged long before. But Anthony still hasn't been released to this day. He already, he's already been stewing in that prison for six years. It's all the more likely he'll be in there forever. Why are you placing such importance on a person who has nothing to do with you? Because I want to see clearly. I can see clearly now, the Rhine Lab is gone. Once and for all, just what kind of company the Rhine Lab I've served all this time is. You may be disappointed, but, I'll, but it'll be far better than knowing nothing. You're gradually, you're greatly persuasive, Operator Silence. Rhodes Island cannot provide you with any outward assistance, however, but I can, from a personal standpoint, provide you my viewpoint. I hope you are able to maintain your notion from start to finish. What notion? The notion that you are doing something good. Thanks, Cat Mama. Good to see you. I'm starting to have some doubts. Is this truly something good I've done? Huh? Why? I'm starting to worry, Mayor. About what? In the past, I've always believed that as long as I gave my effort to any problem, it would always be answerable. But this time, I fear I've run against a problem and have no way to answer. Because you can't solve it? Not that. Not that I can't solve it. It's that if I... It's that I don't dare to. I don't dare to pull it apart. Mayor, did Kafka ever tell you how she and I know each other? Hmm, did you forget? She remembers? She even mentioned it while talking to Mina. Oh yeah, Pinecone is Mina. <laughs> Kafka's back! Mina! Mm-hmm. Whew, finally, found a chance to talk to you. How's your results? Following what you've said, I've been spending this whole time ascertaining this prison structure by the down low. Already got a general grasp of, how, of, of it now. Helps the prison turnkeys... Helps the prison turnkeys are... Lax, but structure's tight. I feel like getting's out a tall order. No problem. No problem, Boblum. <laughs> There's always a way. How about, how's your end then? I'm tapped up with Anthony. Turns out he has an idea from leaving in the first place, so we'll be following plan A operations, helping him break out. We'll be, 
We'll treat the clinic as our secret, secret base from here on. I told Dr. Dama there about you. Just head right over and you'll be good. So that, so that's it? Who was talking? Oh, this was Kafka. That's awkward. Okay. What? You're a snap away from meeting the big guy who's been on your brain? Why do you look so flat? I'm not. I've seen him from far away a bunch of times. I feel like the big guy is kind of different to the one who saved my family once. Huh? I see. What did he used to be like? He used to be a little more, um, cool? <laughs> Ouch. That... Yeah, you really know how to hit a guy when he's down. Bro, I thought you were cooler. <laughs> Ouch. That's one way to phrase it. Once after I learned he saved them all, I went to see him all secret. He was plenty more cheery and open than he is now. Well, no shit, he's in prison. His entire family's in prison. What way? Was he kind of a big splashy guy? The kid with like 10 or so bodyguards fanning out from his heels? No. No, he was, um, he was like a bit more, I'm not sure how you describe it. I'm gonna say he was the rich kid then. Whatever, now he's really silent. He, I feel like he's never showing emotion. It feels some way sad looking at him. He got slammed up here for six years. It would do a number on even the cheeriest kid. I suppose so. We just need to help him escape, and then he'll be back to the way he was. Good as new, right as right, for sure. More or less, right? Uh, I'd pass on him becoming a rich kid again, though. I think it'd be swell. Okay, okay, you lost me now. If you want to put it like that, you're losing me. You said you'd only came here to help Anthony because a friend trusted you to. Why would you go far as to help your, help your silence friend? Because I think Silent is a good person. What kind of reason, what kind of reason is that? Uh, me and Silence know each other from the one time she went out to do field work. Me? Me? I was used to pretty grubby methods to do my stuff, so happened I bumped into her. Guess I made some pretty unsmall trouble for her back then. I drove her an inch from giving up her business there, but things work out, and in the end I got to know her. Can't knock him till you knock him, right? <laughs> do they say that? Anyways, after that, she showed me uh, some more work pretty often. Felt like she was hoping I'd do things proper like she did. Sounds like a real good person. Sure as heck is. Always felt always felt Silence saw this world as a little rosy. A little too rosy though. Turns out there's a lot of people, things people who think like her can't make headway on. Okay, maybe Silence is a little naive, but she's smart and she ain't stubborn. So I've always felt like she's fine the way she is. I want to be friends with her. I may have had plenty of friends, but I only got one like Silence. I really cherish her, you know? So that, so that's why you went to prison to help her? Eh, that's not all of it. Another part is I once heard about this prison. Definitely been curious about this place. Another, another's parts, cause Silence kinda changed this time. You mean, her getting to help someone jailbreak? Mmm, she begged me to help her get all this corporate intel together. I picture how Silence used to be and it doesn't fit with her doing this kind of stuff. Mm, did something happen to her, do you think? I don't know. Ever since I left Columbia, she went to some shop called Rhodes Island. I never saw her again. Been stuck with pen palin'. Never really made clear why she left Columbia either, but... Yeah, I guess something must have happened. In any case, Silence seemed real dead ass on this. I mean, dead set. <laughs> so I figured I'd just help her out proper, for once. Kafka, hear me out. You might be a real good person yourself. Uh, you're saying you saw me as some stinker? I seem to remember you good Kafka, bad Kafka gave me straight into prison with, you know... <laughs> Imagine if you asked a stranger out of nowhere, Hey, let's get locked up together. Don't matter how I ask, they'd think I was going nuts, right? So I, need a, I needed a little more of an approach, you know? Yep, I cannot outwords you. Forget it. <laughs> no, but anyways, I just don't think it's really good or bad kind of thing. It's like how you're going all neck for nothing for the guy who wants to save your family, but you're actually doing is break him out of jail. If saying it's for a friend makes it kind of sure, but maybe more of my friends are good people than the ones who just put on the looks, but people who do bad stuff even though they have good intentions, how do you call them good people, huh? Hmm, I think you have a point. They could have just admitted they were bad people from the start, probably. Oh, 
Here come the jailers. Oh, oh, here come the jailers. Work's about to start. Catch you at the clinic later. You better hustle. Who knows these people might get scrappy again soon. Mm-hmm. Kafka, you take care too. And split. <gasps> Whew! Split. Time to go beat up some jailers. <laughs> So you got a problem with me knowing Kafka or something? No, I have no problem with you knowing her. It's, after I got to know her, I always hoped she'd be able to live a normal life. To never have to do those things she used to do. I introduced her to what work I could do and even wanted to get a job with Rhine Lab. That didn't pan out in the end. But no matter what, the entire time I've been hoping for a better life for Kafka. I've been hoping for a better her and that better was based on my standard of living at Rhine Lab. Hmm, well, I reckon life at Rhine Lab not bad, right? It was conditional. Not on us... On us not knowing just what they were doing. But, as research workers, we should be pretty first place for knowing what we're doing, right? No, I don't mean in terms of research goals. I mean, what was looming in the background. If our research would have some adverse effect, if it truly succeeded, if our results would be appropriated for something, whether or not that happens to be what we're researching right now, since the Diabolic Crisis, what's been happening inside the company has me starting to consider this. Hold on, I should check... The lighting. Eh, it's gonna be good for now. Okay. I like you. I, like you, a majority of our colleagues believe that our research was right, that our decision was ideal. But this is really how- is this really how things are? Efert has given me a cons- given me considerable doubts. That seed of doubt compelled me to leave Rhine Lab for the time being, to head for Rhodes Island. So, this is what's been on your mind all this time, Silence? During my time with Rhodes Island, I've continued my research, but on the flip side, I've begun to pay attention to some data that I've never mind paid mind to before. My mentor gave me these data, and I've never before understood what purpose he had in handing me company, handle, handing me company and local data, and I'd long since put them aside. But once I began analysis and research over these data, I came to all sorts of questions about them. After I first uncovered these questions, I struggled to sleep again. Are you talking about the things that have to do with Anthony? No, a Anthony. More precisely, Simon's... Simon Coe's affairs were just one part amongst them, a tiny part even. There are so many more things going on, not just at Rhine Lab, but throughout the whole of Columbia. There was only... It was only then I truly realized. I understood far too little about this company I called Rhine Lab. This country called Columbia. I called Columbia. But I did not resign myself. I don't believe what happened to Efreet or what happened to Anthony should be considered the norm. And that's why I involved myself in Anthony's affairs over here. But perhaps... All at once, I've jumped too far. I feel like I feel the same as, same now as I did then. The moment when Saria emerged from the experiment site with Efri, cradled unconscious in her arms, as if I had been doused from the head down in ice cold water. Just what happened in that experiment? I don't know. What? I always thought I knew what I was doing, but now I realize I really don't. I only know that I can never let Efri be treated like that again. This. Probably is the only thing I'm capable of persisting in now. Silence. Silence, you're a little drunk. I'll get you some tea. Sober up, you. Slap, slap. Mmm. <laughs> I'm sorry, Silence. I don't know how to comfort you. That's not your fault, Meyer. Mayor. I only blame ignorance of my own past. Personally, I think you already know a hell of a lot, Silence. Just... Everyone's got things they're not good at. Mayor, know this. I truly have not resigned myself. If I'd come to know more, if I'd come to know earlier, perhaps things wouldn't have been the way they are now. But it's not too late to learn things now, yeah? I think Director Mulesai ought, ought to reckon you're pretty strong too. Speaking of Director Mulesai, um, she's kind of passed out on the bench over there. Maybe we should go talk to her. I'm gonna tell the truth, Silence. You tell me. 
I feel like some bits of you resemble a few colleagues I have. You learn something you didn't know before, and you feel like everything you learned already was completely pointless. And then you start grieving about it, like, why didn't you get the chance to learn all of this earlier? I'm not saying that's, like, incorrect, but I think it's really boring way of going at it. What... What everything you put in efforts before, just useless, just like that. Stuff's good and you just... For you and you just... Stuff's good for you just because it's new. Because if it really is, if you really feel like you can use it, then just go study with the same effort that you put in those times before, right? It's not like you gotta rush for it. Here, drink this. Tea for the mind. Things are different though. These matters aren't the same as academia. But, but there's a sense of what you say too, I admit. Aw oh, jeez, fine. I'll come over and feed you. Honestly, silence, you've got zero alcohol tolerance. Meyer props up Silence, who's almost lying on the table, and bit by bit, feeds some sobering tea into her mouth. Oh my gosh. Nothing like a life crisis without some sobering tea. How's that? Feel a little better? Oof. Whew. Much better. Thank you, Meyer. If you feel like things are too rough, we can just head straight back? No, it's not quite the time yet. You're really gonna keep chatting with Director Mulesai? Mm-hmm. That's my silence, pulling yourself together in a blink of an eye. I haven't. Not at all. <laughs> I'd love to run away right now. Run and head straight back. But this is a very rare opportunity. Even if it hurts me, I have to see this through to the end. What you said might be a solution to my current issues, but there is one part I believe you have to be very on point. I can only learn, accept all of this knowledge with the same effect effort that I had in the past. However, I also need to make some additional preparations. Wow. Uh, that was four, right? I'm back. <laughs> I'm back, bitches. You alrighty, Miss Silence? Man, everyone is getting drunker and drunker by the moment. I'm alright. In fact, perhaps I should thank you. Actually, perhaps I should ask you if you're alright. What for? Not much. Alright, well then, shall we continue? Where did you leave off? Anthony offering Robin the olive branch. I was just talking with Miss Mayor about how excellent his methods are. I feel you may simply be overthinking it. Perhaps he didn't think so hard about all the time he wanted to give Robin his pure goodwill. Hmm, <laughs> honestly, I can't deny that sort of possibility, but if he were just a simple, kind-hearted person, he'd have no way of living through this world, Miss Silence. Forget it. I shouldn't be discussing with this with you. Where'd Mayor leave you? Once Kafka and Anthony wrapped up the talks, Anthony finally decided to break out. We got to Robin waking up in the clinic, and Anthony inviting her out to, into the jailbreak team. I have to say, Miss Silence, I'm genuinely curious as to where you got this lead on Anthony from. From my mentor's things. Hmm. Really? Director Parvis got stuck into this too? No, it's been a an age since I had any direct contact with him. Moreover, I'm afraid he may not even know about this. Ever since he left Rhinelab, I sorted through a great deal of intel I'd never once cared about before. And within that, I caught onto the Simon's tale. Oh. This family's destruction was very rapid. Moreover, some data were camouflaged very well, so to many people's eyes, it may seem as though there was no change in figures at all. But camouflage always tends to leave a trace. A statistical form here, a stray datum there. As long as you compare in detail, you'll find the problem that arises within. I was only given those figures at a first try, just to see, and never expected it to come across anything like this. You only realized by chance? No, I guess it was inevitable. But why the sudden interest in sorting out all that data? Because my trust in Ryan Lab and my mentor has started to wane. The diabolic crisis? No, not just that. The diabolic crisis precipitated Asari's departure. What happened after that, I presume you understand even better than I do, Dr. Mulesai. I see now. Wowie, I was just... 
Asking without thinking. Really, you should have come with... Really, I should have come out with all this. Isn't that what you want to hear? I'm not... Good at covering things up, Director Mulesai. So once I thought it through, I decided to be candid with you. I may not be f fond of my mentor at all, but he said something that's stuck in my mind ever since. What makes the schemers sweat is open talk. Seems like I'm the villain here, huh? No. My time living at Rose Island has taught me one thing, and that's not everyone who goes against you should be considered an enemy. I believe that you are no villain, and neither is Saria. It is only that you and I and Saria have no way to reach a mutual understanding. Huh, <laughs> maybe, yeah. Director Mulesai, do you still want to hear Mior? <laughs> do you want to hear Mior? Of course. Of course, we're just getting to the good part. Aw, but the story's pretty much nearing the end here, isn't it? I mean, at that point, Anthony's whole jailbreak crew has more or less in place, right? Anthony himself, Doma, the mortician, Kafka, temp worker, Mina. And in Rhodes Island, everyone pulls together to kick ass and pull a prison break, right? No, things aren't that simple. Huh? No one said Robin joined Anthony's team. Eh? It's true that after that, Kafka, Dama, and Anthony started working out how to pull the, off the jailbreak, and Robin was even included in it, but things were not that simple. What happened? Well, don't spoil it for yourself. Do you still remember the helper you mentioned Hydro sought out? I do. What about him? He fought Robin. Oh, he found Robin. Ooh. Why does it look like this has a tail? Also, is this the toilet? Why is it so high? Okay. What am I even meant to do? Ahem. Is something the matter, sir? Miss Robin, I've been waiting to meet you. I presume right now you're waver wavering over there whether to continue down your hit or if you want to help Anthony jump ship. Excuse me, who the hell are you? Who are you? My name is Jesselton, Miss Robin. Don't you worry, I'm just like you. One of the hitmen sent in here to take out Anthony. And, and I so happen to hear Mr. Anthony inviting you to break out. Gasp. Mr. Anthony, Captain Barton was wondering if you're doing okay. Are you hurt? Nothing serious, just a few scrapes. Let him know to wait a little longer. I'll be finishing up here soon. Right, not a problem. Take your time. You were the jailer back there? Ah, looks like you remember me. Wonderful. I like to imagine them pretty memorable. If you gone and forgotten me, why, I'd feel sad as a burden beast. Y you were listening the whole time? Ha ha ha, I was the one who brought your prison pals over there while well, you're out stone cold. Anthony might have kept his voice down in that little safe room of his, but see, I'm the kind of person who notices things. Wasn't difficult at all to listen in. What are you trying to do? I'm here to give you a deal, Miss Robin. A deal? A deal. A deal? A deal. A deal? Of course. We, can, we can't forget to praise Mr. Anthony for his moves. What he did was offer you the olive branch. But truth is, whether you accept it or not, it wouldn't do him no harm. Marvelous move. I gotta say, I can't even help but give it a gold star. It's crying shame that he don't understand who you are. Otherwise, I'd fear he'd given a second thought. Who am I? Yep, you see, Miss Robin, you have not sensed the fractural relationship that existed between you and Mr. Anthony. Can you please get to the point? Miss Robin, do you still recall the name of that place your pop worked at back in his lively days? Black Cloud. Right on. Black Cloud Trade Corporation. Your pop was the general manager there, but right when his business reached a shining peak, Black Cloud trade suddenly went under. After all that, no matter how hard he tried, business never picked up again. Ever since he kept trumb tumbling, started drinking, these days he lies on a hospital bed waiting for his medical fees so he can get operated. So, you know who bankrupted Black Cloud, Black Cloud trade? You don't mean. Correct. Simon Code themselves. The family name Anthony's so proud of. Simon, one and the same. Of course, I gotta prove I'm being genuine. So, let me give you the whole picture. This is a story inside of a story now, okay? Just, just keep up. The short story is, six years ago, the Simons and Hydro Bro fought over something. Both sides wanted the other half of the pie. Both sides were pretty even weights. Their tussling and bustling grew and grew until one day someone drew blood. 
In the end, it was Hydro, Hydro who stepped ahead, and the Simons were dust in the wind. During the calamity, Smith Simon, at the head of the family, decided his only son, Anthony Simon, ought to be sent to another city. And then, once he escaped to Ironforge City, poor little Anthony got captured. Lucky thing is, in Ironforge City state law, all criminals would be tried in the state itself. In other words, he was not sent back to Bunker Hill City for trial. Then, after that, state law said he'd be locked up in their own Mansfield State Prison. Now, I gotta say, I think all Simon planned this well in advance, sending his son to Ironforge to be captured. When all said and done, Anthony's safe place... Anthony's safe, precisely because he's not in Bunker Hill City where Hydro ruled the land. Does this have anything to do with my pop? Of course it does. I just told you Simon were completely... Uh, to Simon were competitors of the kind with Hydro. Even if they were a, a move behind, they'd still get the last word while death was a coming. And they're among the gang that spat the last word at why that was your old man's company, Black Cloud Trade. We can also assume if the Simons were one step ahead of Blade Hydro Bro instead, uh, Smith Simon would have had the Marbers to far outstrip the brothers all those years. Just like the Simons went poof overnight, Black Cloud Trade took the Simons' death struggle square. And when the sun came up, they vanished. Your pop, of course, he wanted to make a comeback. But that would give his... But would his rivals give him the chance? Not in a million years. So, Colombian business goes. Time it stinks more blood than the battlefield. And because of that, your pop's never been up on his feet since. Now, I gotta admit, it makes total sense why Mr. Anthony wants to get out of here and give Hyde, Hyde bro t hell twice over. But you, Miss Robin... We can both assume for sure, if Hydro never wiped out the Simons, then the Simons would have never taken out your pop's black cloud trade with them. We can also assume if the Simons were the one step ahead of Hydro instead, Simon Smith, Smith Simon would have had ambitions to far outstrip the brothers all those years. He might have, he might, might have even been more peaceful in the dealings with Hydro's various underling firms. But if don't live anywhere, present reality is. The Simons have caused your old man's collapse. And the guy you're killing, Anthony Simon, that's the family's last man standing. Their sole survivor. I don't think it adds up like that. Sure, of course. I'm not telling you this is righteous, Miss Robin. This ain't no justice after all. If tragedies can be outweighed, then I must say, the debt Hydeblade owes Mr. Anthony is far heavier than what Mr. Anthony owes you. But that does mean your revenge has to wait its sweet turn until his is done. Is your pain worth less than his? That ain't right. Pain's an equal mistress. Think about <laughs> all those miserable years your old man's gone through. You got enough reason to put the big old guy to death, don't you? I... And we must consider something else too, Miss Robin. Something even more practical. The Simons are already ruined. Even if Mr. Anthony can break his way out, even if he promises to sweeten your pop, even if that end... Even at the very end he succeeds, what the hell is he able to give you? Can he pay all those urgent medical fees for you? Can he get your pop to the most cutting edge hospital out there for treatment? Maybe old Smith passes his business brain down to his son, but in the short term, he can't do squat. But me, I can give you these things. You can think of it, you can think it over, Miss Robin. You're... Sussy. You can think it over, Miss Robin. Ooh, I see, I see. You're the one hiring me? I am, here in the flesh. I sympathize with your experience, but I figured out how you tick. I know you aren't willing to take charity, and I don't like giving others charity either. So, I prepared for you a deal. Why would you tell me all that? Of course, it was. I was not planning to reach out to you at first. Only this move Mr. Anthony made has forced me out. Forgive me sorrows once more, but after living in here, even I was one step away from Mr. Anthony's boldness winning me over. And if I hadn't told you any of this, you would have had that cheap sympathy to go your head, and you would have chosen to help him. And if I were running some basic con on you today, say, Mr. Anthony brought your old man's company down, I'd worry about you hearing the full picture from his side soon enough. And I wouldn't look like... And wouldn't it look like a cheat and scoundrel then? You'd want nothing to do with me then. So as may as well tell you everything you ought to know. Let you choose for yourself. Go and pull all those past disputes to one side. Just think about this one. Simple question. 
You gonna choose to help him out of sympathy with likely no returns? Or are you gonna help me out for all the promises in your interest? Wow, this man's sussy AF. Don't trust him. Don't trust him! Believe in Kafka. Miss Robin, have you decided? I'm in. Yes! Leave the sketchy cop! Leave the sketchy cop. Was that... Was that MB5? Hold on, I have to check. This is... This is it. This is it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that was... That was after. Six! Oh, six! Back to the bar. Well, now I understand why you said that even though Robin joined the team, it wasn't that simple. She could be a double agent! She could be a double agent. Looks like Jesselson talked it over with her, and she joined Anthony's side as a spy. Okay, well, you know what? I thought that I had a unique idea, and now you're going and making it look not as unique, and I don't really appreciate that very much because I wanted to look smart. Okay, fine, I'll let you have this one! Mule's eye, yes. And here I thought I wasn't gonna be any more surprises in the story. I didn't know that Robin, Robin had been through all that. Not even the intel I read mentioned it. And Jesselton, heard about him, but I didn't know he could be this difficult to deal with. You know about him? Yeah. He's one of the Parasol's ace hatchet men. And I heard that as long as you got the money, he's more than willing to be your errand boy. He's Hyde Bro's top trump card for this whole kerfuffle. Oh, we lost, we lost Mule's Eyes voice. Known to have dainty fine tastes, but most people think he's just beyond repulsive. So, he said he was just some normal hitman, but who knew he was such a thinker? I knew he was Hyde Bro's trump card, but I didn't expect him to make a snap decision like that. He made it seem like he gave her a choice, but she actually didn't have much of a choice. It's just exactly as he said, though. He had information on Robin's background that Anthony didn't have. What's more, he'd been watching Anthony the whole time without him knowing. It's no wonder he had the advantage. If I were in her shoes, faced with that kind of predicament, I would have picked his side too. You're right. Oh, I thought you would disagree. I don't agree with the way he thinks, and I don't like him. But at the very least, I think what he said to Robin was at least more forthcoming than you were trying to test me over and over. How do you talk like you know who I am makes you just as repulsive as my mentor, Director Mule's Eye? Wah! <laughs> Looks like I went a little overboard. Guess I should apologize. To tell you the truth, even I feel the same way about him. He's kind of boring. It's not easy to find someone like Robin if you don't go out of your way. Some Someone who has to complicate relationship with Anthony. And to bait her into the game like that. Well, whatever. In any case, we have all the players in the jailbreak party by now, right? Yes. We've got a pretty smooth informant, an assassin who's not as half bad, a girl working part-time who gets to go anywhere she wants in the prison, a morgue doctor who's been working there for ages, and an excellent leader. It's pretty well-rounded for a ragtag team. Right. Long story short, after all the groundwork was laid, they more or less moved onto a preparatory stage. Uh, phase. It almost went without a hitch. Did anything happen during that time? Nothing other than the assassinations. Oh, right, I almost forgot. That hit was still on, wasn't it? Yes, but since the jailers had no way to handle it other than looking into all the other prisoners and the hitmen were only going after Anthony, they gave up on doing anything about it. Ah, uh -huh. that's just like them. Oh, I just remembered something Robin told me. What is it? That thing about how they convinced Dama to leave without them? Oh, leave with them? Huh? What's this about? What's this about? I thought Dama was part of the team. Oh, that's right. They didn't find out until later that even though Dama said she'd help Anthony break out of prison, she didn't intend to leave herself. Why is that? Because she had never been on the outside of the prison. Take her with you. Eh? You heard me right. I ain't actually going with you. How come? Don't tell me you actually like it here. No, I don't like it here. Not one bit. The last morgue doctor took me in when the prison was docked. Far back in than I remember. I only ever lived here. This is where I grew up. 
The patronizing jailers, the hate, the inmate violence, the deaths too. That's all I ever seen in my life. Sometimes I take a walk around the outside when we pop into the city. And I tell you I don't belong there. I'm scared. Then why are you ha helping Anthony break out of this place? Because he's my only friend. Oh, that's so wholesome. That's so wholesome. It wasn't until Anthony got here that I knew some people like him in the world. He gets into scraps like the others, but he got some self-control. He gets angry, but he don't let his anger make any trouble for nobody. He's always polite, downright fair to everybody. He pushes bonks on, he pushes books on me and tells me what life's like on the outside. When he first got here, he'd belly aching about how fate's unkind to him. It's al already helping him think, I was already thinking of helping him get back out then, but I don't know anything. I wasn't being much of a help to him, so I didn't say nothing. Then he started getting calmer and calmer and everyone else started looking up to him. Is happy and a little sad at the same time. Felt like he was missing something. Besides, I always thought that when he he shouldn't have been locked up here. He should have had a better life. That's why that's why it's awful happy for him. Decided to leave after Kafka spilled the beans to him, and just helping him out is more than I need. Don't say nothing to him, but I'm ready. If something goes wrong somewhere, I'm more than willing to give him just to see him out of here. This isn't right. What's the, what's the matter? <laughs> What's the matter with you? Robin, you don't look you don't look good. Luckily, this is the clinic. And the morgue. Nothing. I'm just thinking. You're really you're really willing to go so far for him. Yeah. I don't think that's a good thing though. You're right. Life on the outside's a lot more complicated than life in here. It's not all sunshine and rainbows out there either. There's probably more bad things out there than good. But I also think it's a shame if you don't try to live all that just because you're scared. You don't think Anthony belongs in prison. But I don't think someone kind-hearted as you... But I think someone kind-hearted as you doesn't belong here either. You deserve a better life. Do I? Imagine being a not native English speaker trying to read this. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, why is it so difficult? I don't know. And I'm pretty sure he'd think the same way about you too. He wants a better life for you. Let me think about it, okay? Yeah. Alright, yeah. I'm inhaling water. Basically a fish at this point. I can see how someone who's never known life outside the prison would be scared of the world. Well, thankfully, I know how it all turned out in the end. She left with them. If I didn't know that, this is about where I'd start getting all anxious. Isn't that great? You ruined the story! <laughs> Lady! <laughs> Hiya! So after that was when they started preparing for the jailbreak, right? That's right. Uh, it should have been about a month and a half after Kafka was put in prison when Anthony made the decision to get out. Then it took them about another month to come up with a concrete plan to get out of there. Which means there was about a month and a half from the time they finished their plan to the actual jailbreak, right? It was about four months altogether. It's not all that long, but it's not all that short either. But I guess... We're finally the part that I'm interested in the most. The part where they take the spoon and start digging. What's this diagram? Oh, I know, the prison's layout, right? That's right, it's kind of crude, but it's got everything you need to know on there. The part that I'm the most curious about is how they got out. Of course, I'm interested in the story behind the team, but this is the prison break. That's the part that keeps us all on the edge of our seats. You told me you want to understand the whole process. Is that really just because you're interested in the jailbreak? Sure, you can think of it like that. Fine. How does this whole thing move? What a looker. If we're gonna, uh, if we're going to talk about it, we might as well start from the beginning. 
Didn't we just start from the beginning? What have we been doing for the past four hours? Oh, it's only been two hours. Okay, first let's take a look at the prison's design. The architects clearly learned from their experience with the nomadic cities. The prison wasn't built directly on top of the cha chases. They built the mountain base first, like what you find in any real world. Then they finished the prison design on top of that. Whenever they, whenever they talk about nomadic design, all I think about is Howl's Moving Castle. I'm like, the prison just gets up and freaking walks, man. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. All the prisoners. <laughs> Or no, they just, and then when they want to leave, they just turn the door and they open it up and it's like, new city! <sighs> okay, anyway. That's a pretty common technique these days, but back in the day, it was ahead of its time. And it was very successful. Now, let's set aside the prison's outside appearance for the time being. The prison has three floors and each floor structure is more or less the same. At the lowest... Le at the lower left of each floor is the A zone. This is where the non-infected are kept. To the upper right is the B zone, the infected block. Wow, the infected block is ginormous. The upper left and lower left of the corners are where the guard houses are. That's where the jailers usually stay. I like how there's so many jailers. The black monolith at the center is the C zone, where the most serious felons are kept. The area in the middle is the underground factory. This is where the prisoners all work together. Over here is the clinic. It's also... Dama's room. Next to that is the morgue. On the other side is the library that they build at Anthony's suggestion. That's more or less the prison's layout. Mina spent a bit of time exploring with the, ba with the basic idea figured out. They came up with a way to escape from the prison. Mm-hmm. You can tell by looking at the layout that the sea zone tower isn't actually built directly into the ground. What am I even looking at? An emergency. Normal mode. Oh. Someone's escaping! Shoves the entire building underground. <laughs> okay. There's an elevator in the middle that goes to the basement. Not only that, but the tower itself can actually be lowered underground. Oh, no kidding! Yeah, these kinds of structures aren't very common. They probably designed it that way so they can keep the inmates underground during emergencies. Where they can't cause trouble. Right, and to lower... The tower, you normally need to flip the switches in two of the guards' houses at the same time. Oh, I get it. Wow, that's such a video game thing. Do they actually do that in real life? The info I got after the fact did mention that the tower sank all the way to the bottom. So they probably activated the mechanism at the guard houses, right? Huh, wait, wait a minute. That doesn't make any sense. Even if they made it underground, was there a way out down there? First off, they didn't go to the guard houses. They went, they thought about it at one point. However, they found out the me mechanisms could only lower the tower very slowly. And then he figured out from a document he found at the library, the document was probably a design diagram left behind after the other prison's construction. My assumption is that no one thought about it, so they snuck in there when Anthony suggested building a library. <laughs> they probably figured out no one would ever need that for anything. After all, the prison was built more than 20 years ago. This was 25, it was 25 years ago. In any case, they couldn't just wait for the tower to slowly sink to the bottom. The guards would have tried to do something, and they... And so they abandoned this idea altogether. Huh? But in that case, fortunately, they found something else on the document. Look at the top of the central tower. There's a room here, and it's in a prison cell. What? That's the real control room of the tower, if not the whole prison. The control room, I see. That's where you can make the tower drop all the way to the bottom, right? That's right. And it's also possible to cut off the prison's electricity there to cause a commotion, however brief. There's usually isn't anyone on that floor. You need a special elevator key to get inside. The regular key cards on the jailers can't access this floor. I think I get it now. They went up to the control room, sank the tower all the way to the bottom, and cut off the power to cause a ruckus up above. But that still leaves us a question. What happened after that? There, is there a way out underground? There is. Doma provided that way out. She said that going by her memory, the last morgue director had told her there weren't any previous designs the architects could reference when building the prison. And there's actually a few abandoned structures at the bottom of the mountain. And so, and some of those led to the surface outside the prison. In particular, there was one fairly close to the morgue. It's close, but there's also a wall there, three meters thick in between. 
So, did they dig their way through? Yes, they dug their way through the wall. What did I say? Time to get digging. The walls themselves are made of rebar and concrete, but it's just soil outside. Once you find a weak, weaker section of the wall and breach it, you don't need any advanced tools to dig the tunnel. That's what they did. They took turns digging at the clinic. Huh? Now that you mention it, if we're going to dig a tunnel at the morgue, couldn't they have left as soon as the tunnel was done? Have you forgotten already? Getting to the surface outside the prison isn't going to do you much good when the prison isn't stopped at a city. The prison also raises its security whenever it stops at a city. That happens... When that happens, the prisoners get much less free time. Even Anthony hardly has any free time. They couldn't just have gone to the clinic like before. Oh, right. <laughs> I forgot. Right. Since the prison was stopped at the city, Mina left with the construction crew before the jailbreak. She didn't actually participate in it. She rendezvoused with the gang outside the prison. Mortal engines. Oh, I'm unfamiliar with that. Anyway, at the point in the last month and a half, they stole the key that gave them access to the control room at the top tower of Chief Barton. Then, after a few days of the prison was slated to make its next port call, they finished digging the tunnel and made sure it led to the surface. Now all the preparations were finally complete. I see. How can someone who's never known life outside the prison... Oh, we already read this. Oh, so we're finally at the part where the actual jailbreak happens. It feels like we've skipped over some details, but this sounds a lot more complicated than I imagined. Um, getting a little bit sleepy. I might have drinking too much as well. Oh, me too. Let's uh, everyone take a nap. How about I make everyone some coffee? We're almost to the end. I know, I know. But I already have a pretty good idea of what happened after that. All of the groundwork has was late, so they just had to wait a day for the actual breakout. But on the day of the jailbreak, someone was missing. Am I right? That's right. In the end, they decided they would escape through cleaning duty at Zone C while the prison docked at Nulai... Nulai... Brr. But Robin didn't show up at the appointed time. Robin sussy. After that, th they didn't know that Jesselson, the pup puppet master here, already knew about all their plans. As for Robin, she was waiting for them up ahead. Dun -dun 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 -dun. Wow. Okay, Mr. Muscles. Well, things are getting a little bit wonky right now, but we... Why don't we go over the plan? Just like what we're doing right now, we'll give the prisoners and jailers what for while we're here to clean up the cells. Yes. Then, before the guards even have time to react, the two of us are gonna head to the top of the tower, sink this bad boy into the ground, and cut the power. Dama's already waiting for us down in the basement. We just gotta regroup with her and head inside the tunnel we dug. After that, all that's left is to change into these work outfits and that Mina got us. I've been wondering about this, and... I somewhat doubt it, but do we really have clothes that actually fit me? You poor, poor man. Relax, Doma. Relax. Doma actually sewed something special for you. Yee! If one outfit's not big enough, we'll just sew two of them together. Be sure to thank her. Of course. Ugh. Smell you later! You seem rather excited, Miss Kafka. <laughs> Breaking out of prison is just so much fun. Of course, I'm excited. It's just... Right, how come I haven't seen Miss Robin around? Look at what we have here. All old faces on cleanup. Today's cleanup saves me the headache of having to go over this again. Right. Officer. What should we do if one of us tries to off Anthony again? What? 
You get dropped on the head? What do you think you just got frisked for? None of you can take on Mr. Anthony's barehanded, not by a long shot. <laughs> I sure want to see you take on Mr. Anthony. Give me a hollow when the fight gets started. I'll be rooting for you. Piss off. I ain't talking to you. <sighs> What's going on? Why isn't Robin here? Hey, A-Zone buddy, where's Robin? You B-Zoners can kiss my... Oh, it's you, Kafka. No idea. Ain't seen her around. I'm here to do her work. Enough talking! A-Zoners, with him. B-Zoners, come with me. Ain't got time left. Sorry, Robin. You're just gonna have to blame yourself for not showing up at the most important moment. We've come too far to turn back. We'll apologize to her if we see her again. But we need to go up now. Yes! Yes! Wow, this room is fancy. So this is the main control room. Whoa, all this dust. Watch out. Eh? That was a lot of ruckus. Robin, what are you doing here? I have a backup card. A backup card? When did you... Wow, so many people here. Stand back. We're in a hurry. We don't have the time to talk. Let's get this over with, quickly. Done and dusted. Oh, my favorite, my favorite. Donut eating warden. Oh, God damn it. Where in the world did my key card go? Did I flush it while taking a dump? Chief Button, what's wrong? Mind your own damn business. Yeah, yes, sir. Piss off. <laughs> Stuck up, asshole. I'm guessing somebody probably pissed him off. Yeah, probably Anthony. I don't really know what he's going on, but it seems like somebody's trying to kill him. Bond likes to brag about how perfect the prison is. This gonna keep him on tender hooks. We're prison guards, you know? Eh, it's not like someone getting killed that I'm happy about. I just like seeing him so peeved. Besides, let's be honest. We see Randall and Barton do so much dirty work over the years. If you ask me, I think Randall knows who sent these hitmen here. He's just turning a blind eye because he's their pocket. He's in their pocket. Maybe. Yeah. Don't move, Robin. Don't make me kill you. <laughs> well, damn, Robin. You're good. Even I didn't have you pegged for a spy. I think you might just have a gift for this gig. Wait a minute. What are you holding? Whoa. Is that a bomb switch? Kafka, lower the tower right now. Whoa. It's burning. Hurry. I forgot which one's which. I kind of get the feeling these probably aren't going to work anymore. Oh, there we go. Should be this one. Please, 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 please work. There. Why does this prison look so pretty? What on earth? It's not moving. Is this thing broken? Robin, why are you doing this? I... It's going down. Shutting it down. Tag nabbit. Whatever. I don't even remember the last time I was up here. Just need to have Randall make a new one. <laughs> Cheap button, you. What? 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 <laughs> what are you doing? I'm heading upstairs to see how those damn fools are doing with the cleanup work. I don't think it's going well. What? What happens here? What in the name of... What's going on here? It's going down. It's going down for real. Hold on to something. Hold on to something, Kafka. 
Anthony, over there! Robin's gonna go get thrown into the elevator! Hold on tight, Robin. Why? Save it for later. Get ready. I fit like, that sounds like a rocket, like, blast off! But they're really just going down. Down to downtown. I don't, sorry, I don't know the words to that song. Okay, man, that was a good song, but I don't remember what it's called or what the words are. Anthony, you and Robin okay? Robin could be better to us. I'm fine, I got Robin. Seems like the whole prison power went out. It's pitch, pitch dark here. This is an opportunity for us. Yes. It feels like the tower crashed straight through the floor. We're probably at the second floor basement. Still some distance away from the clinic. Right. We should get going before the jailers get here. Robin, are you okay? Is, is it really a good thing that I'm okay? It is. Don't let it get to you. I did tell you before, you could keep trying to kill me. If you think you betrayed me for what you did, let me tell you this. I'm afraid none of us are close enough to talk about trust just yet. <laughs> not even me, not even you. Oh, come on, that's cold. Wouldn't you say it's more problematic to completely trust a person after a few months? Of course, I'm a little disappointed. But that's all. Nonetheless, I'm curious. I can tell you weren't acting when you were working together. You can't fake those emotions. Why did you do this, Robin? My daddy, because I have daddy issues. My father, he made lots of money and he was nice to me. I'm proud of him. But one day, his company went bankrupt and he's been a failure ever since. He's changed, he started drinking a lot and he got angry, he hated everything around him. My mother left him. He was heavily in debt and in the end, he went to the hospital with liver problems and so many other complications I don't even get the details of. My mother tried to talk to me, talk me into moving in with her, but I never forgot how well my father used to treat me. I wanted to do something for him, so I gave up my hobbies, tried taking on all kinds of jobs. But when the medical bills kept coming, then one day someone came to me. He said he could give me lots of money, I just had to kill someone for him. And I'm the target. I see, I can't offer you anything. And that's why you made this choice. No. He's been watching you here, dressed as a jailer. His name is Jesselson. After you made me that offer, he found me and told me the very last thing that the Simons did was destroy my father's company. My goodness. In that case, not only should I not hold this against you, I must apologize. Why? Why does this man have so much chivalry? <laughs> no, don't apologize. This isn't what I'm trying to say. It's not like that, Anthony. I knew I was doing wrong. I knew I shouldn't have done it. But I gave up. I didn't know what I was supposed to do, otherwise, I just didn't know. I'm tired. My mother wanted me to make a choice. My father wanted me to make a choice. Life wanted me to make a choice. Jesselson wanted me to make a choice, and even you wanted me to make a choice. I don't want to make any more choices. I don't want to judge what's right or wrong, good or bad. I just don't want to. I'm sick of it. Why do I have to choose? It's okay. It's okay, little raccoon girl. Pet, pet, pet. But you know... But you know, Robin, you can't just hand off your decisions. You have to think everything through and make your own choices. Then you need to take responsibility for each and every one of those choices. Otherwise, you'll never be able to take your fate in your own hands. This is the most important thing I learned during my years here in prison. Strength is important, and so is intelligence. But the most important trait of all is courage. The courage to make your own decisions and pay the price for them. I'm afraid of making the wrong decisions myself. But I can't let that get in the way of making decisions at all. I used to think I had no one to rely on because I hadn't found anyone reliable. But I realized that there is no way we can truly rely on anyone in this world. But no one but ourselves. I'm sorry I didn't notice your pain in time, Robin. I must, I must reiterate. What you've done almost ruined my escape plan. That's why I won't forgive you so easily. Nonetheless, as someone who has suffered a similar situation, I hope you for can forget about all this for the time being. You must scrutinize yourself and think about what it is you want to do. What is it that I want to do? Doma's room is right up ahead. You have all the time you need to think. I understand if you don't completely trust me, but I told Justice and everything about your- Oh, I understand if you don't completely trust me, but I told Justice and everything about your plan. He's definitely waiting for you somewhere up ahead. I know. <laughs> oh, you don't have to worry about finding me. I've been waiting for you right here. 
It's coming from Dama's room. You don't mean... For Dama! Um, was that, was that the, was that after? Oh, that was, oh, oh, no, no, that was, that was after. This is the beginning. Mighty big ruckus, you cause Mr. Anthony, and some, for some reason, I have a southern <laughs> twang now. <laughs> How to not know about your plan in advance. I've lost it. Uh, had I not known about your plan in advance, I'm afraid I couldn't have stopped you. You're Jesselton? That's right, I'm Jesselton. I'm sure you noticed we passed by each other in the prison a couple times, but allow me to introduce myself again. My name is Jesselton Miller, the very last obstacle in your prison break charade. Where's Doma? Right here. Anthony, I'm sorry. I was waiting here for you, but I didn't expect this guy to barge in the clinic with the prisoners. Toma. This is such a gloomy place. It would be unbecoming to me to let a beautiful lady wait here all by herself. That's why I figured I'd offer my I'd offer her my protection. Mr. Jesselton. Oh, Miss Robin, looks like I was expecting a little too much from you. What a disappointment. Or perhaps you never tried to kill him in the first place. I she failed, and your lackeys couldn't hurt me. Yet you spared her life. I must say you are a fine gentleman, Mr. Anthony. Oh, we found it. We found it. Save it. Very well. Let me get straight to the point. Mr. Anthony, if you don't want this young lady to die, please step over here. Yes. Miss Kafka, I would appreciate it if you would stay right there. I can tell you the opportunist <laughs> opportunistic kind. Please, do not do anything that would put Miss Doma in harm's way. Ugh. Yes, just stand right there. All of you, surround him. I like how they just use the prisoners. Anthony, don't listen to him. It's okay, Doma. We're gonna save you. I have to hand it to you, Mr. Anthony. It's admirable that you're able to stay this calm, even in such a precarious situation. I'm sure you know what it is that I want, and I know- I also know that I won't spare you out of compassion. Here's my suggestion. Abandon the lady, abandon your affection, and come fight me. You're wasting your breath. I wonder how long you can keep this up. We lost it again. And you, Miss Robin. Eh? I would- I would like you to kill Mr. Anthony. After all, you still have a job to do. It doesn't matter what kind of agreement you made with Mr. Anthony or if you had to change your heart for whatever reason. If you want the money and you want to save your father, this is your last best hope. I... Why the hesitation? Did Anthony promise you a blank check or have you grown soft on him after, soft on him after all this time? Last chance, Mr. Robin. Mrs. Miss Robin. I... I... Think of your father. Think about how, you, how your life is in tatters. Think of your future, your wish. If you, if I were you, I wouldn't hesitate. What are you trying to do? What am I trying to do? Isn't it obvious? If all I wanted was to kill you, I had plenty of chances here. But that would be a little boring, wouldn't it? I've never found killing someone all that fun, Mr. Anthony. But I really enjoyed these moments when the person is faced with no choice but to abandon their past. That is why I lured Miss Robin here. I long to see her change. I crave for her fall. And, I thirst for your change as well. I thirst for the moment you finally lose your cool and bear your fangs. All, for all the sake of your family, your goals. I mean it, Mr. Anthony. Take off your gentleman's facade. Think about your family. Think about all you've been through. The humiliations you face. Think about the reason you're breaking out of this prison. Do you really want to die here? Do you really want to throw your life away just for a woman you've only known for a few years? Stand up, Mr. Anthony. Push Miss Robin aside. Forget Miss Doma. Come at me and kill me! Not everyone out there is like you, Jesselton. You should know that you aren't all that special either, Anthony. I'll give you five seconds, Miss Robin. If you don't act, I'll do it myself, and you'll die here with him. Five. Miss Robin, you have yet to pay off your father's medical bills, and Mr. Anthony is penniless. Anthony, I... Four. Mr. Anthony, your parents are having a miserable time in prison. 
They're being ostracized. Father, mother, three. Anthony, don't worry about me. I can't die here. Oof. Ah. Guess what, bitch? You ain't killing yourself on my watch. Robin, don't. Well, Miss Doma is quite a bit more fiery than I expected. How admirable. Alas, it didn't go as she planned. Jesselton. Now that's the face I want to see. Mr. Anthony, wonderful. I'm curious. What is it that fuels your conviction? Do you think your death can buy my sympathy for everybody else here? Are you... Are your principles worth that much to you? Perhaps you still have a card up your sleeve. I've done much to betray my principles in this prison. I sweet-talked the jailer, stuck up for Barton, fought those who didn't want to fight, and lived a life I didn't want to live. This has nothing to do with principles. This only has to do with me. I won't sacrifice Doma for my own ends. That's all there is to it. Even though your family's still waiting for you, you have no right to talk about my family. Even though you still have revenge to take and questions you need answered, none of that is more important than the life of a friend. Even if it ends up killing you, even if it ends up killing me. Anthony. You have to think everything through and make your own choices. Then you need to take responsibility for each of those choices. Otherwise, you'll never be able to take your fate in your own hands. You must scrutinize yourself and think about what it is you want to do. Anthony, how regrettable. Well then, two. Robin finally takes a step forward. Let's go, Robin. It only took you way too long. She slowly walks toward Anthony. One, Miss Robin. I understand your struggle, but you have a decision to make. Anthony. How many times are you gonna say Anthony? No matter what you end up doing, don't regret your decision, Robin. Right. She swung the knife in her hand. She swings the knife in her hand, which then flies towards its target. But its target isn't Anthony. Kill Jesselton. Grr. Not random NPC A. Man, I loved him like a son. Anthony, leave Doma to me. You prick. Hey! You two sure kept me waiting. When did you... Ugh. Stabby, stabby. Anthony. Rawr. So this is the trick you had up your sleeve. You knew Miss Robin was on your side. Perhaps your offer wasn't enticing enough. Perhaps your offer wasn't enticing enough. Are you sure about this, Miss Robin? From where I from where I'm standing, you have chosen a path that has no future. It's true. If it wasn't for the Simons, my father my father wouldn't have turned out like that. But it's his fault for not getting back up for not getting back up his feet. I knew that. I didn't want to accept it. And I Really don't want to do that either. Anthony promised to come up with some something to raise money for my father's medical bills. But that doesn't actually matter. I've decided I'm not going to kill Anthony, and if he doesn't help me, I'll come back with something and something myself. And if my father dies before I get the money, then I then I'll kill myself and apologize to him in hell. There's a content warning on this video, by the way. Uh, TW suicide? That's my decision. Beautiful. <laughs> beautiful indeed. I shed one tear. What a beautiful resolve, Miss Robin. I suppose you've made your decision. You want to turn back on our agreement because of that resolve? Very well. Who am I to blame you for that? I should applaud you for making that decision even. Too bad I'm a fucking asshole. And that ain't never gonna happen. <laughs> that said, I still have one more- one- one point- What?! I still have to point out one thing. When I said this path had no future, I didn't mean it won't have much of a future after your little jailbreak. I mean all the ends right here, right now. This ain't a future where you make it out of prison alive. I guess we'll have to see about that. 
And just as it turns out, I am a sexy man. <laughs> oh my lord. Oh my lord, why? Why do you look like this? That's not fair. No, no, no. I have... I have to admit, you are strong, Miss Anthony. As for me, killing and violence aren't exactly my thing. That's why Miss Doma was the only first step in my attempt to stop you from seeing about that. As for the second step... Oh! <laughs> ah! Anthony, Kafka, are you two okay? I'm fine. You haven't forgotten the shackles on you, have you? What on earth is going on right now? Damn it, this guy saw everything. I appreciate your compliment, Miss Kafka. You asshole, you've been lying to Robin from the start. No, no, no. No, no, no. I just like to have more than one option. Had Miss, had Miss Robin gone through with the deal and succeeded, it would have saved me quite a bit of trouble. And if she failed, as you can see, I prepared the little fallback for her. You can't say I planned for all this without putting myself in her shoes. Easy for you to say, but you dragged her into this mess. <laughs> I never denied that I wanted to see her struggle, did I? However, Miss Kafka, you are very much in the know yourself. Think about it. Do you think she could have raised enough money for her father's surgery had I not dragged her into this mess? I think it's, a, it's extraordinarily unlikely. Humph. See? You can't argue with me on that. Humph. I have to admit, she has a lot more to gain by helping you out. But she didn't help you. And that's more than enough for me. Yeah! Roar! <laughs> Roar! Still trying to fight this fight despite the circumstances? Very well. Then allow me to personally tear apart the last illusion. Anthony, I'll back you up. I ain't quite as strong as Anthony, you know. Huh? You guys watch out! His hand! His hand turned black! Ha! Huh. How hot woman! To think I get to crush this emotional get-together. I know everybody's having a family reunion, but <laughs> y'all gotta stop now. It just fills me with delight, Anthony. Right, the wine. Wait, wait, yeah, he's like, he's in the thing, he's like, he's throwing wine on all my people and then everyone dies. Was that before or after? I don't remember. <sighs> oh yeah, here we go, here we go, it was before. Son of a... It's no use, Anthony. Miss Robin, I'm afraid I've underestimated your fighting prowess. I must say, I'm taking a liking to you more and more by the minute. However, how about it? Help me now? And I'll forgive you all that you've done. How about no? Ha! What's with this guy's hand? It got so hard after it turned black. I am not going to make any comments on that statement. Oh, let me introduce to you to my own Aginium arts. I can control iron. I've also received a few modifications to my body. When you attacked just now, it felt as though you hit an iron plate, didn't it? That isn't just my own aginium arts at work. Beneath my skin, I have what I suppose you can aptly call the crystallization of technology, courtesy of Rhine Lab, a tiny metal plate in. Well, I'm afraid I don't know what's... It, <laughs> um, breathe. Well, I'm afraid I don't know what its proper name is, but it's strong enough to greatly reduce the impact of your attacks. Hold on, you're from Rhine Lab? Unfortunately, I'm not. In any case, I'm surprised you're able to put together, put up such a fight and dispose those shackles. Looks like it's time to get serious. His hand turned into a blade? What the F? Did you know, Mr. Anthony? Ever since I arrived at the prison, ever since I first laid my eyes on you, I felt a sort of mismatch. You are doing your damnedest to control yourself, to make yourself seem harmless. And you make yourself look well-mannered. But strength and- but your strength incarnate. 
from that moment onward, I've been waiting for this to happen. So that I can tear off that well-mannered facade of yours and unleash the violence hidden underneath. I'm sure I, I'm sure I didn't disappoint. Not at all. You opened my eyes. <laughs> Hello? It's me! <laughs> you have no right to judge who I am! Rawr! I'm not here to judge. What I'm trying to say is you're much less of an eyesore now. Using your teeth too, huh? <laughs> I'm sorry to say, but your teeth won't be able to tear into me. Damn it! Damn it! Anthony! My friend! Is there really that much you can accomplish outside? Will you be able to save your parents? Your family? Let me tell you, you'll have nothing once you step out there. You're living quite the life in here, in prison. Even the warden has Koto to you. I may have said I could have killed you long ago, but it wouldn't have been a walk in the park if I didn't go through this little excursion. Why don't you- why go through- why go through all that trouble? Isn't life in prison pretty comfortable? On July 26, six years ago, I was headed to a dinner party when all of a sudden a bodyguard told me something had happened back home and my father told me to run. I had no idea what happened. I didn't even have the chance to say goodbye to my parents before I went on the run. I was arrested when I made it to Iron Forge. I thought that was all there was to it, but it didn't take long after I was put in prison for me to find out that wasn't the case. The way I'm treated in here is not how criminals are usually treated. I realized right away that my father probably arranged for my imprisonment. Well, 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 what a coincidence. <laughs> what a coincidinky. I, I, I think so too. But what if that's what you think, wouldn't you say it's all the re reason not to betray your father's wishes? My father's wishes? Looks like you really do enjoy looking down on people who plot them out, Jesselton. Has anyone ever told you how petty you are? I've been told that before indeed. But I'm afraid how petty I am has nothing to do with your prison break. I could live a comfortable life in here. I could turn, even turn it into my own little kingdom. But what would that get me? It would only make me the prisoner with the most freedom. I've lived here for six years, and it was nary a moment when I didn't want to step outside. I want to leave, not because I want to prove how amazing I am. I want to leave because I need to figure out what happened back home. I need to tell the ones responsible for my family's downfall that we're not done yet. To tell the truth, that impassioned, impassioned speech of me is really rubbing me the wrong way. But no big deal. Whatever the case may be, you ain't getting out of this place alive. I may not be able to take you down, but I stalled you long enough. The other guard should be here by now, as soon as the lockdown ends too. You did well. Your friends did too. This isn't your fault. It's just that most of this life ends up unsatisfactory. Unfortunately, this is as far as you go. Listen here. Here comes the Reaper. So this is it? <laughs> what should we do now? What should we do? Uh, sorry to disappoint, but the Reaper isn't coming just yet. On a different note, Anthony, you are way too loud. I can hear you all the way over here. Who are you? Hmm? You... Jesselton, but female version! <laughs> I have to hand it to you. I have to hand it to you. Even I was a little surprised by your plan. It took me a good while to stop those other guards. Huh? Where have I seen you before? Hold on. You... It's Saria! Ride Lab Defense Director Saria! I remember y Right, I remember you, Jesselton. I'm honored to be remembered by someone as esteemed as you. Not a lot of re resumes make it to my desk. I remember the moment you told me I didn't get the job, too. But first, I'm curious. Why is a Highness the Defense Director doing in a prison? You needn't worry about that. All you need to know is that... This is where it all ends for you. Where it ends for me? No, no, no. It seems you're mistaken about something. Director Saria, or should I just say Saria? I heard your ability isn't all that dissimilar to mine. But before I even had the chance to find out, you'd already slammed the door in my face. For all these years, I wonder whether you were actually stronger than me. Looks like we have the chance to find out now. Humph. <laughs> Her hand changed color too! It's so white! 
Beautiful. You're right. Your arts are rather similar to mine. However, Pwah! the Mr. Blades for hands. That is so weird. Sir, how do you not cut yourself by accident? Okay, Edward Scissor Hands, calm down. Their clashes echo through the morgue. Sarius, two knife hands may seem like no match for the black blades of Jesselton. Four knife for hands, but they couldn't be farther from the truth. One step. One step, two step. Missy Elliot, and yet another step! After each and every strike, Jesselton can't ha but help but take a few steps back. There isn't a single scratch on Saria's knives. I've told you before, Jesselton. You're way too fixated on the moment and you lack perseverance. I don't need anyone like that working for me. You're too small-minded. With Saria's sideswipe, a crack appears on Jesselton's blade. That's literally his hand! What does his hand look like after this? Once. Twice. Thrice! Chesselton had no room to attack. All he could do is keep defending. Damn it. If this is how you are, there's no way I could accept your application. Out of the way. Saria! I told you to get out of the way. My hand! <laughs> Sorry lands a final strike, breaking Jesselton's blade in two, leaving a narrow, deep cut across his body. Sorry. Uh... No! How are we gonna do... How are we gonna do the accent anymore? That was suddenly Italian. Apparently he's Italian. Although, although a lot of these people like strike me as Italian New Yorkers. So so strong. I heard the defense director was pretty badass, but this is on another level. Thank God I've never crossed her. Thank you very much, Miss Saria. It's okay. If you can still walk, now's the time to do it. Before that, I have a question I need to ask you, Anthony Simon. Please go ahead. Have you heard of the name Ferdinand before? Ferdinand. I heard that name from my father. So it was you, Ferdinand. Ferdinand? Ferdinand. Ferdinand, Director of Energy. Yes. Well, that's kind of a surprise, but... You know what really bothers me? Just what the hell was Saria doing here? I wanted to ask you that about my, ask you about that myself. Why was Saria there, Director Mulesai? What do you mean by that? Saria was your right hand man in this incident, wasn't she? Or more accurately, she was your former right hand man. Oh, what makes you think that? Ever since we started our conversation, I've been wondering where you come in the string of events. You said you have nothing to do with Hydro and energy, and I believe you. But since you went out of your way to find me, you perhaps are a little too passionate for someone who's supposedly just an observer who knows about this incident. So my preliminary judgment is that you're most likely my competitor as far as this incident goes. You want- <laughs> It's Franz Ferdinand! <sighs> you want Anthony as well. We all want Anthony, he's pretty hunky. Uh, and the thing that puzzles me the most is what Saria was doing there. She's completely cut ties with Rhinelab. She's Rhodes Island operator right now. The way I see it, she has no reason to get involved. The way I see it... Well, I could probably say she's your trump card too. I really didn't know she was there when it all happened. I still remember what you said in the beginning. The only parts I understand are the beginning. Oh, the only parts I understand are the beginning. Hydebro initiated this assassination plot they've been brewing forever against Anthony Simon. The last of the Simons, who was locked up in Mansfield State Prison. And the very end, where Anthony led 
a group of successfully escaped Mansfield and then met up with you two and made it out of Columbia. As for everything in between, well, I had a chance to find out, but it slip, slipped away now. Very sad about that. As my competitor, you know more than just that. You likely had an accomplice who should have told you everything that happened there. But that's all you know. And from indications, you seem... It seems you really don't know that much about how everything unfolded there. And considering how sorry I showed up out of nowhere, the only conclusion I can draw is... Music cuts. Oh, it doesn't. She was working with you, but she turned her back on your agreement. But... If that was really the case, then your appearance would also be unexpected. So, why would she hand Anthony over to you? It's true that all of you are working with Rose Island. It's true that all of you are working with Rose Island, but if everything's exactly as you said, you two wouldn't be on the same side. No? No. And I really don't understand... Didn't understand why until just now either. Kafka certainly didn't stand a chance against her. So, in theory, she should have seen the true victor of this whole incident. And well... We didn't really know each other, so she didn't really have much of a reason to hand Anthony over to me. But, I think I know the reason now. <laughs> I get it! She was trying to trick me! Exactly. This is just my assumption. To her, having control over... Actually, no. I don't really want to call it that. Let's call it a rescue. By rescuing Anthony, she, be she became the ultimate victor. She thinks the best place for Anthony is to be... Is to be the best place for anthony to be isn't where you are that would only help her grow your influence so she probably chose to make take matters into her own hands i don't know what it is that she's doing and i don't want to know but she definitely knows that hide hide bro won't let this slide nor will you not that she has now that she has betrayed you so that's why she didn't show up until the very end she wanted to hide the fact that she was ever involved in this whole incident i don't really I don't really think she scared me, scared of me or Hydro, but okay. Probably better to just let sleeping dogs lie. I would do that too if I were her. Besides, she probably still has something else to take care of here in Colombia. Oh, whatever. It does, probably doesn't have anything to do with this. She, whatever. Anyway, the fact that we're all still, that, what? The fact that we were there was probably just as much of a surprise to her. She probably got the gist of the situation from Kafka and arrived at that decision. Beautiful reasoning, Miss Silence. You're exactly right. I was the one who told Sorry about this. And my guess is, Jesselton was put to jail after that. They probably figured out right afterwards he wasn't a real prison guard. And that's why I don't have much information about him. I really got, it, got thrown for a loop by Sorry this time, though. I mean, I knew she wasn't hard to hand over to him right... Uh, I knew she wasn't going to hand him over to me right from the start, but still... Then why did you ask her to help? Well, obviously, I didn't have a choice. There wasn't anyone in the company trustworthy and capable enough. If there was anyone else I could have turned to, I wouldn't have bothered asking her. Maybe the ecological direct- I may be the ecological director, but I'm not actually all that powerful. Look at how miserable I am. I stole- I stole the guy from me and now I've got to rack my brains to see how I can get him back. You couldn't- Find a more miserable section director if you tried. So it's exactly as I thought. You brought me here because you want to hand you want me to hand Anthony over to you. If I said yes, would you do it? Anthony has already left. He's on his way to Rhodes Island. If I could tell you yes, but that won't change anything. Relax. That's not my plan. In the beginning, but I had a little change of heart. First of all, if my hunch was correct, Rhodes Island would have nothing to do with this whole affair. Your entourage is only here because of your bodyguards or your little trip to procure equipment, right? That's right. I did not remember as Rhodes Island, but I'm an individual. I, I lied to them. Well, you're not a good liar, Miss Silence. Anyway, I get to the gist of it now. Your goal is probably to make Anthony a Rhodes Island operator, or at the very least, put him under the company's protection. That's the best course of action, in your opinion. And well, setting aside the question of whether Anthony would willingly subject himself to Saria's grumpiness, Saria probably wanted to keep Anthony on her leash. But if Anthony is okay with it, Saria probably thinks he's nothing but trouble. That's why she chose to have him join you guys at Rhodes Island. It's a pretty good choice. Actually, she probably thinks it's all good enough for her as long as Anthony makes it out of prison alive and things don't go either way 
Either my way or Ferdinand's. As for what Anthony wants to do, and what he can do out of prison, that doesn't matter one bit. Is that so? That's right? It's hard for me to imagine Saria caring about others. Actually, it felt pretty strange to me when she agreed to help me out. But why is she okay with him joining Rhodes Island? Things could get out of hand, but with him at Rhodes Island too. Probably because he keeps this whole prison affair relatively low-key. If someone really looked into this mess, it would put Hydro in the limelight, and those guys would do whatever it takes to cover this up. And even though Rhodes Island and Rhine Lab work together, as long as all this is kept under wraps, there's going to be a lot of room to turn things around. In other words, if Anthony becomes a Rhodes Island operator, he'll actually be pretty safe for the time being. I don't really know much about Saria's work relationship with Rhodes Island, but I know a thing or two about this company. I think if, it, if I were under Rhodes Island leader, I wouldn't mind taking in Anthony at all. Eh, I'm so lost. Well, to put it simply, Saria snatched away something I was hoping she would give me. But she didn't keep it for herself. She pawned it to a pretty well-guarded shop. Oh, that much is easy to understand, but what about it? So you want me, an employee of the pawn shop, shop, to talk to the owner into selling the item in question to you? Bingo! If Saria decided to keep Anthony around, I guess there wasn't anything I could have done about it for the time being, but since she chose to turn him over to you, to Rose Island, there's still room for me to intervene. Don't worry, I'm not asking you to do this all by yourself. If Saria, the former defense director, was able to form a partnership with Rhodes Island, then I'm pretty sure they'll be willing to work with me, the ecological director too. I'm hoping you'll act as my intermediary between me and Rhodes Island. In return, I'll give you an opportunity to come back to Rhine Lab. It might even be the perfect opportunity for you to salvage the whole diabolic crisis situation. Wow, so tempting to go back to Rhine Lab. Eh, all of this sounds like you guys are about to do something bad. Don't get the wrong idea, Miss Mayor. This is just business. Most things are in the world aren't full of tender loving care. Just like how Rhodes Island only took in Saria because they saw value in her. And just like how Saria handed Anthony over to you guys because she thought you two would be able to escort him back to Rhodes Island safely. As for me, I believe that if Rhodes Island does end up taking Anthony in, they aren't going to offer him a helping hand just because he tells them about his past. We can slap a fancy label on everything and make it less ugly for the outside, but that doesn't actually make it any more beautiful. Let me give you an example. How could I tell you if I had a little power within the company, and then I sing the praises of Control and tell, and tell you how amazing of a leader she is to make you think helping me is actually the right call? If I had done that, you definitely would have reacted the same way as you just did. And, you know, I'm actually really good at doing that. But I didn't, and out of respect I have for Miss Silence after our conversation today, out of respect, I give you this, if you give me this lead, Anthony, I am willing to give you something that's worth as, just as much, if not more. What do you say, Miss Silence? Silence, what should we do? I, I refuse. Get him. Get him. Oh, how come? You think what I'm offering is beyond attractive? Director Mulesai, from the beginning to the very end of our conversation, you haven't ever asked me what I want to do with Anthony. You subconsciously arrive at the conclusion that, just like you and Saria, I want Anthony this lead as well. Am I wrong? He'll be one of the ways via which to keep energy in check. As for Saria, I don't really know what's on her ma mind, but I'm sure she has a uses for him as well. Wow, I like how we just like push him off to different people. Like, who, you, who wants Anthony? All right, it's an auction. As for you, you're a Rhine Lab researcher who had to leave the place because of an experiment gone wrong. You want to use him to wrangle something from Rhine Lab. Am I wrong? I don't plan on using your so-called lead, Director Mulesai. If Saria didn't show up and Anthony was rescued some way or another, and then met up with Meyer and me, I would still have told him to join Rhodes Island. I'm not doing this because I want to keep a leash on him. Your lead, though. Oh, through Rhodes Island. Throughout our entire conversation, you, word, you used the word lead to describe him over and over. I don't really like calling him that. Anthony isn't a lead to me. He's a person. He's alive. His entire family was put, put behind bars in just one night, and he himself was locked up in that place for six years. If there's a better place for him to be, I naturally would, would have told him and helped him get there. I'm not trying to keep him around and use him as a bargaining chip in the future. That's what I think is the right thing to do. Looks like we aren't going to come to an understanding. I'm afraid not. If you don't need anything from us, we'll take our leave now. 
Eh, you don't really think I'll just let you walk out of here after I told you all that, right? Researcher silence? I don't know. That's why I made an agreement with food on hand. Oh? Anthony! Right here. Looking, looking good, sir. Better than the last time we saw you when you were in prison. You, I thought you already left Columbia. The one who left was a, the one who left was a decoy. The real Anthony has been staying with us at the hotel. And I asked him to come earlier just in case. It was Rhodes Island, it was our Rhodes Island escort idea. I didn't expect to, to see this arrangement come in handy here though. You want Anthony, don't you? This is your only chance to get your hands on him, Director Mulesai. Care for a drink, Mr. Anthony? If the circumstances were different, I would gladly share a drink with you, Mr. Mulesai. That's a shame then. Let's get down to business. To defeat the Huns! Well, Mr. Anthony, would you be willing to come with me? Only if you're able to defeat me, ma'am. I eavesdropped on your conversation, and I must say, I really don't- I really don't dislike the way you think. I, too, think there are certain things that aren't quite as colorful as they may seem. But, after all that I've been through, I also think there are things out there that are truly beautiful. Well, looks like I'm being treated as the villain here, again. No, I told you before, Miss Dr. What? Director Mulesai, I don't think you're a villain. From where you stand, from what you- what you've done couldn't be more correct, and I also think you've extended to me plenty of goodwill gestures. It's just, I'm sorry to say this, I can't bring myself to agree with the way you think. That's all. It kind of feels like I made myself a new enemy without knowing. You mentioned keeping energy in check. Did something happen inside Rhine Lab? You aren't going to make this deal with me, then I really can't tell you any more about that. Of course, if you don't plan on calling it quits here, I'm sure you'll find out one day. I... Anyway, I'm throwing in the towel. I'm not really that confident. I fight... I'm, <laughs> I'm not really that confident I fight a buff dude like Anthony with just a clone. A clone? That's right, this is just a clone. Looks real, doesn't it? Let me leave you with a an advice, researcher silence. You may think that helping Anthony is the right thing to do, but that couldn't be further from the truth. It's laughable to think the Simon Co. was merely a victim in the fight with Hydro. Both of them fought the battle just because they were bent on bringing the other side down. It's just Old Smith wasn't playing the game as well as his opponent was. In other words, if Smith had managed to make his move before Hydro did it, it would be Hyde that's hunkering down in Bunker Hill right now instead of his family. But that point of view, is Anthony really just a victim? But what do you think, Anthony? I can't deny that. Before, there are no ifs in this world. I know that. Research your silence. I'm telling you this because I want you to understand this. If you want to do the right thing, you need to be able to tell exactly the- wait. If you want to do the right thing, you need to first be able to tell actually what actually is the right thing. Beyond that, you also need to understand that doing the right thing doesn't necessarily mean you don't have to pay the price. Thanks for the advice. Well, see ya. <laughs> oh, Whoa, she turned into a puddle. Oh, right. I'm really throwing in the towel with Anthony. Rest assured, you won't find me doing anything uncalled for. You can talk through the puddle too? <laughs> yeah, what? I might even help you guys cover this up. Better thank me. As long as I'm not your villain, let's have another chat next time we get the chance. Mr. Anthony, I hope you have a wonderful time at Rhodes Island. I appreciate that, miss. Well then, Miss Silence, it's actually time to set out now, isn't it? Yeah. You good, Silence? Mayor, could you help me up? Hmm, what's wrong? My legs are a little sore. Oh, okay. Yes, Mayor, best girl. <laughs> I should have expected as much from a section director. I was so nervous just now, I almost couldn't say anything. The way I see it, you did really well, Miss Silence. Yeah, I think so too. You were really cool. Thank you. I'm curious, what kind of place is Rhodes Island? It's a long way to Rhodes Island from here. I'll explain it. 
everything you want to know along the way. I see. Very well then. I'm looking forward to this journey already. Guys, we did it! We did it! We did it! We did it! Liter literally, Mule's Eye is like, well... The minimal amount of effort that I put in didn't work. Time to retreat. <laughs> Well, that was the end of Mansfield Break. That was, I think that was the most fun I've ever had reading a story before. Man, Jesselton might be like the best character to voice ever. We're gonna have to put a Jesselton in every story now. Just that one overly aggressive character with a very strong accent. Ha <laughs> uh, ha. Um, so next week I'll be back in my apartment. So we'll have green screen again. That's exciting. Um, I'm not sure what we'll stream, but I'm, I'm thinking that we'll probably do a stream. Until then, oh, video coming out tomorrow, so if you weren't here at the beginning, the video that I said was coming out last weekend, I ended up uh, commissioning my friend to edit it. So my friend Nate, if any of you guys know Nate, edited the video that's coming out tomorrow, um, where I tried to guess all the operator types, the six star operator types, and uh, it was an absolute tragedy, so be prepared for that, I guess. <laughs> um, that was super fun, but I think that's I think that's all the updates I have. If if anyone's interested in um, Honkai Star Rail, I think I'm gonna be streaming that tomorrow to continue the story where we left off, and we get to meet Serval. Love Serval. Serval's trailer came out today, and God, it was so good. She sings, and that's cool. Um, but until then, don't forget to like the video, subscribe if you're not, and join the Discord if you want to hang out. I'll see you guys later.